Your Lordship, I apologize for mentioning out of turn, Your Lordship. Ah, is that I crave leave to file an appeal using the server copy, Your Lordship, without the certified proofs. Yes. I am for the petitioner. I am led by Advocate Firdos Shamim. I am praying to grant leave for this matter, which must be filed immediately. The petitioner is a member of West Bengal Legislative Assembly. He has been elected. Leave granted. Lordship, leave may be granted to file this appeal, Lordship, with Savakar. Leave Diplo may be granted to file this appeal without a certified copy. Yes. Please call the list. Well, it may have my last kind leave to mention, Miller, a very urgent group nine appeal. Yes. Uh, on the last day, Miller, this relates to Miller, the uh, uh, closure of the contract. Due to Miller, there's a impossibility of the. It's a fresh uh, appeal or. It's a fresh appeal. On the last day, they took adjournment. They assured that they will not take any step. Yesterday, Miller, at 6 p.m. in the Miller, uh, evening, they have sent and purported email to the appellants saying that they would be proposing to recover 65 crores. Also, three years banning and all four features of my performance security. On, is very, on what date they took adjournment? On the, on the, on the, on the, on the 9th. Kindly see, this is the, the order. The, only the, this is the order on 9th of June. Well, on their ground, the matter was adjourned. is a fresh matter. And Miller, can you have a look to this? Miller, we have served them a notice in the night that saying that in view of this urgency, Miller, through email, as also Miller, to their recorded lawyer, Mr. Arifin, that this is the ground of urgency. Miller, kindly Miller, turn the next pages, Miller. They have sent this email. Yesterday at 5.58 p.m. Miller kindly turn to Miller that email copy. Miller that contains the attachment which recorded the date of 26 June. A purported letter Miller addressed to the appellants and his constituent attorney. The matter is in session to your lordship. They took the adjournment. We were apprehending that they would be taking some steps. They say that very well we will not take. It was a verbal assurance. How could they issue this type of letters, Malat? Now, uh, can you get, uh, uh, bring the uh, advocate for the respondent? Well, I can I have some notice. Can you see, Malat? No, no. You, we, you, during the course of the day, before the raising of court. Very well. Okay. well I'll be trying to, Malat, my advocate on Junior will be trying to, Malat, ensure that uh, he must be present there. Oh, or, Malat, request Malat, if, Malat, if, if may I, Malat, subject to Malat's convenience, Malat, may it be, Malat, put on a very supplementary list, Malat, okay. this matter. No, not today. You are, please bring the counsel. Very well. You, are, Lord, you request him to be here. Very well. Lordship, Lord, may I have your Lordship's kind Lord, leave to file a matter without a certified copy, Lordship? Uh, the memo and stay both to be filed today, Lordship. The matter is learning, running before the senior Yes. Please Grateful, the... Lordship. May I have my Lord's leave to mention a matter for inclusion? My Lord, this matter was supposed to appear on 19th of. You please give the letter. Let us see. Grateful, man. Yes, please call the list. Appellate side, daily list. Assign matters, item number one. And item number one and two, ah. Malad, both are released by Justice Samrita Shina on our prayer. Ah. Because Malad, uh, item number six, we have made Malad, certain allegations that few candidates were Malad, forced to withdraw the nomination. Malad, that issue Malad, needs to be decided by together. That's why if you kindly take up item one and two with, along with item number six, that would be Malad, convenient Malad, for all of us. And the candidates have filed the red petition. Yes, Matt. The candidates have filed these yes, two. Yes, candidates have filed. On, on 18th, Malad, they have made complaint and, uh, in the night. Immediately, you have made a complaint to the election commission. On, on the At the time of Malad, uh, they are threatening Malad, at night, we have made a WhatsApp message Malad, to the concerned authorities. Malad. Malad, at page 18, uh, 38 and 39. But uh, they have not withdrawn their nomination. Yes. They have withdrawn. withdrawn. They have withdrawn. The first allegation is that intimidation of the advance of the police that they will be booked in narcotic case. And at night, Milat, the goons of the ruling party Milat, went to their house, Gherawad, Milat, threatened, and thereafter, Milat, on the next day. Why can't you inquire into this? But with whom you will inquire? 
the district magistrate district panchayat and election officer and being the district magistrate DPO. no no he will file a report saying that in his own volition he went but there is a criminal angle to it that's what they say and when you just may recall man on 15th you also pass and judgment let while also is a record in you also sort of the date of withdrawal on 17th this is no, crucial you date form a, some independent team through the election commission you form a independent team either with police officers and your poll observers etc and in, uh, in the which is this uh, district south and south, south and you have appointed a observer yes yes huh? that is all going to come before your lordship tomorrow the item is there in contact. that is one of my prayer in item number 6 that you need to form a team of um, let members led by uh, national human rights commission and other members of state all right please come uh, by the, uh, these red petitions have been filed by two candidates who had filed their nomination for the which is that place let's this is diamond herb and let to contest huh? oh the candidates is contesting let at manad bolshidhir first paragraph second line first paragraph. kalinagar gram panchayat um candidates in the bolshidhi kalinagar gram panchayat south 24 parganas the allegation is that uh, they were forced to withdraw their nomination by way of by intimidation and threat in this regard immediate complaint has been given to the state election commission uh, we direct the state election, election commission to constitute a team of officers to inquire into the complaint in an independent manner and file a report before this court as to the exact state of affairs let the matter appear on monday in the same position there will be order in 1 and 2 and to vote ah so what about it please okay so sonal that stay petition one page is upside down that are same substantial yes correct 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 monday on the other second day is copy is i am filing second petition ka naam bol do dekhe na bol bol kona the second day is copy nahi ट्रस्टिंग but actually ponzi scheme is being uh, your lordship this uh, i will uh, go into the details of this petition your lordship will understand there are no, because what we uh, will do is we'll assign it to that page the headed by your lordship Jesus, is the master of the roster uh, uh, headed by jesus joymala bakshi yes. because there will be continuity and this pi can also be taken by the consultant the this pub, please take down this public interest litigation relates to certain allegations in the ponzi scheme the other matters concerning the ponzi scheme are being heard by uh, division bench presided over by honorable justice joymala bakshi since the subject matter is connected with the other cases dealt with by the honorable division bench uh, let the matter be uh, sorry this matter is released uh, uh, and uh, may be placed before the honorable division bench dealing with ponzi scheme matters um the papers be placed before the chief justice for appropriate orders next i don't know four grateful sir okay. 
फोर Yes, my lord. My lord, I have just filed this application. Earlier, one application was filed, and my lord has relying upon 2010 notification uh, dismissed the said petition on the ground that he has a capital discharge. But my lord, this by some means that the honourable appeals court consistently held that UGC AICT regulation 2003 and 2010 March regulation. Is governing law, holding the thing, and binding of all stakeholders, including the state. My lad, his his uh, biodata, private respondent's biodata, is absolutely fraudulent. Recently, my lad, couple of months ago, honourable appeals court three judges bench of the honourable. Uh, have you challenged this order passed in the page number seventy in the earlier writ petition? Yeah, but that has been annexed in this. No, 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 that has no, my lord. That uh, review app application has been filed, but uh, in view of this, uh, let, uh, just judgment uh, Supreme Court recently, Justice Chandrachur, the if the public intervention is being without any substantive uh, review. But uh, one thing, if for an identical relief, your petition was dismissed. No, this is not an identical, my lord. This is not an identical because my lord relied upon first rung of the uh, pay scale, first rung. Of the pay scale, but there are three scars within assistant professor. He is not entitled to become an assistant. So then you can do one thing: you can challenge this order before the honourable supreme court, and thereafter you. No, but look, then what happened? There is a review petition already filed. Kindly have a look. I will place one judgment of the honourable appeals court again on this point: whether section eleven is applicable or not. Not supreme court said no. No, section eleven is not applicable. Rejudicata or cons constructive rejudicata is not applicable. But starting from rural electricity versus state of EP, the latest that I'll show you. This is not applicable in this case because fraud vicious all judicial act. See, in the present grounds, you have said that the dismissal of the earlier writ petition is based on wrong presumption of the dispute in question. Huh? Unless you challenge that order. No, no, no. My lord. That, that, why are no, that is your grounds. No, no, my lord. This, no. no. Have you, have you Don't say no. We are reading from your grounds. Uh, uh, page 21 uh, of your uh, yes. uh, writ petition. Yes. Ground number 8. Yes. Can go to the how, can, how can we sit in judgment over a no, 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 that is why I'm telling you. Have you looked at paragraph? No, 30. no, we will not look at it. Let us first decide on facts. Right. Page 21, paragraph 1 of the grounds, para 8. You mm -hmm. say that the earlier petition was on a wrong presumption of the dispute in question. Mm -hmm. And how do we say that this judgment is well, that is why that is why Justice Chandrachur said this is one. If it is on that, that's why I can have a look that means paragraph 35. 35 association rural association Yes. I have only one copy. National. So we have, you have oh, Reference to Bolu, right? The reference check of 2022, volume 5 SCC, page 
বাইন্ডিং অল স্টেট এন্ড আদার্স So as per AICT regulation, he cannot be assistant professor without, or a professor without a PhD degree. And then look at his biodata. Hmm. And let's look at his biodata. Page. 31, 51, page 51, page 51, yes, and she and 2010 march yes <laughs> next he said he became associate assistant professor to become an assistant professor in higher scale he is required to have a phd even if he has no phd then within 7 years he should obtain phd but as per three judges the decision of the supreme court that will end in 2010 because in view of the new uh, regulation came into force he yes. claimed this is most ridiculous that he became professor and head of the department to become a professor one should have phd degree three years as associate professor but to become a head of the department 10 years well i've just seen for kerala high court judgment and affirmed by the honorable apex court i've just seen that first my you see the regulation it is admit here correct 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 page 51 it has been affirmed by the three judges recently I'll page come to pala 4 that's just us must give me the reference otherwise how can i follow what are you reference kat or op kat 133 2019 wait on a unreported judgment you must give a copy i'll give you i will get the copy there pala 4 this is judgment of the kerala high court i could affirm by the supreme court i i i show the supreme court judgment I, let us see this this is a crystal clear hmm. i'll come to para 4 shortly after state paragraph, rules paragraph 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 4 first page 26 shortly after the state rules were amended Good. 
डिपार्टमेंट Head of the department, he claimed that he became 2011 became head of the department. Candidate qualification as per qualification of the professor in the respective discipline. In addition, the candidate should be an eminent person in the field with 15 years experience in teaching, industry, research. Out of which three years must be at the level of professor and above. Professor, above. Professor, come to professors. PhD degree with first class deg degree at bachelor's or master's degree in the appropriate branch of engineering technology with 10 years experience. He became professor within four, four years from joining in teaching industry research with which five years must be at the level of assistant professor and eco equivalent. Right side, candidate from the industry profession with master degree in engineering technology, with profession work which is significant and can be recognized as equivalent to PhD degree, with with ten years industry profession experience of which at least five years should be at the senior level comparable to that of an assistant professor would be eligible. I mean, come to paragraph five, page twenty nine. Yes. When the appeals were pending on 5/3/2010, my lord, that was not placed before my lord. That is why this confusion, confusion arose. arose because of this notification should have been placed before this honourable court. It has not been placed. Had it been placed, there would not have been such an order. The ICT issued pay scale, service condition, service condition, and qualification for the teacher. It is nothing only to pay scale. An academic staff in technical institution degree regulation 2010, as the qualification prescribed by the regulation assumes importance in the context of the controversy in this case, we extract below the qualification prescribed for the post of assistant professor, which he claimed that he became assistant professor. The qualification prescribed for the post of assistant professor, he designated as lecturer. My lord has also used the word "designated." Actually, my lord's order related to first rung of assistant the professor. assistant professor. There are four ranks. First rung having ten academic level. If a person have ten academic level as per UGC regulation, he cannot apply. Eleven or twelve. In view of the this regulation was not placed before, so that's why this mistake. Come, 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 my dear lord. Engineering professor, associate professor, my lord. Same page. Same page. Qualification as above, that is for the post of assistant professor as applicable and PhD or equivalent in appropriate discipline. Post PhD publication and guiding PhD students. Minimum minimum of five years. Experience in teaching, research, industry, two years post PhD experience, associate professor, these are generated. Professor, qualification that is for the post of associate professor, post PhD publication, and guiding yes, yes. PhD students. Malala, we have also did something, so I know that PhD guidance is also a criteria for getting a professor. 
and publication. Not only the I may be Einstein or maybe uh, C.V. Raman or maybe whatever may be, the, but but for obtaining or getting the post of professor and others, yeah, I need to fulfill the condition laid down by the AICT or UGC. That is a settled norm. My love, right side. Minimum of 10 years teaching research, which is at least five years should be at the level of associate professor. Can you see his biodata? Can you see his biodata? Page 51. Yes. <laughs> he said he was the professor in 2011. But before obtaining PhD. Before even without obtaining PhD. And that too within four years. Did not have 10 years of teaching experience. Without any teaching experience. My Lord, this judgment was affirmed by the three judges being of the Honorable Supreme Court. My Lord, separate another judgment, three judges being. Supreme Court said held that you, state can enhance but cannot dilute. Well, this is the judgment affirmed by the Honorable Supreme Court. We have heard Lance, Lance senior party at length. We are in agreement with the view that the notification <laughs> we are in agreement with the view that the notification dated at 18 to 2003 granting seven years to acquire PhD, PhD degree for the right to hold the post of associate professor, redesignated that assistant professor, would come to an end in 2010. And thus, person who acquires the PhD degree on a subsequent date will only be eligible for the consideration from the date when they acquire PhD degree. <laughs> he said he became professor. Without PhD. Yes. Without PhD. When he can't can be associate, associate professor without PhD. without PhD, he claimed that he became PhD. Yes. Professor. And, and, and professor, professor, professor. Yes. And the first time this this is this has not been placed before my lord. I'll come to first 2010. These are AICT regulations dated 5th March 2010. <laughs> Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, come to this has been quoted by Supreme Court in other, other cases. I will place those cases. P P point one one. This regulation may be called the All India Council for Technical Education, pay scale, service condition, and qualification for the teacher and other academic staff in the technical institution regulation 2010. Two, Roman two. No one shall be eligible for the app to be appointed, promoted, or designed, designated as professor yes. unless he or she possesses a PhD and satisfies other academic conditions. But not only PhD, he must have other academic conditions as laid down by the AICTE from time to time. This, this shall, however, not affect those who are already designated as a professor. The pay, now can you come pay? The pay of teacher, matter what happened, what is the, not properly activated. Actually, there are only two band. One, this is 15,600 with my Lord quoted to 
Now 39,000, 1,000, another 37. But within this band, there are three pay scale, according to his emotional revenue. He belongs to lowest rank. My Lord, Potel, he, the, the pay scale, he belongs to Potel, like my Lord. Each pay scale has different stages of academic grade. Two pay scales, etc., with appropriate academic grade pay. His academic grade pay, kindly look at his day, zero in all pay. Only in professor, he said 10,000. Otherwise, all are zero. No, nothing is there. Two pay, etc., with appropriate academic input. Each pay band shall have different stages of academic grade. Academic pay, which shall ensure the teachers and other equivalent cadres covered under the scheme, subject to other condition of eligibility, being satisfied, have multiple opportunities for upward movement during his career. Yes, what experience of that many years? Yes. <laughs> now come. Next he said. In 2007, he joined. Within one, he became senior grade. That 2003, I will place Rab Saptaral. And a two, an assistant professor with completed service of four years, possessing PhD degree in the relevant branch discipline shall be eligible for moving to AGP 7000. Advertisement, rightly or wrongly, said 7,000. Though Honorable Supreme Court has hey, a statement in the advertisement, if in violation of the regulation, regulation will prevail, and a candidate can't get any benefit out of that wrong regulation, a wrong advertisement, that I will place the judgment. But uh, see, a two, a three. Assistant professor possessing master's degree in the relevant branch discipline as defined for technical education shall be eligible for education for the completion of five years service as assistant professor. Assistant professor. Next, my lord. Assistant professor who do not have PhD or master's degree in the relevant branch discipline or the program shall be eligible for, eligible for AGP of rupees 7,000 only after completion of six year of service as assistant professor. He became professor within four years. And when there is a prescription by, laid down by the AICT that to become an associate professor need to be a teacher for six years, he became professor within four years. Okay. This is... This is possible. Without president. Without. <laughs> Next, pilot. The upward movement. Yes. Uh, Next, pilot. Roman Pai. The upward movement of AGP. From a movement from AGP rupees 6,000 to AGP rupees 7,000 for all assistant professors shall be subject to their satisfying other condition as laid down by AICT. Next, the pay of the incumbent to the post of lecturer senior scale, that is the pre-revised scale of rupees 10,000 to 15,020, shall be redesignated as assistant professor and shall be fixed at this appropriate stage of payment with 15,600 based on other, on their present pay with AGP of 7,000. Yes. Post of associate professor shall be in the payment with 37,400 to 67,000 with AGP of 9,000 directly recruited 
associate professor shall be placed in the pay band of rupees 37,000 with ADP of 9,000. Incumbent assist, ass, ass, assistant professor and incumbent lecturer selection gate who have completed three and the revised pay scale, 12,000 something, 80,000 such, etc. on 1 1 2006 shall be placed in pay band of 37,400 to 67,000, ADP of 9,000. Well, come to, kindly come to. Page 33, page 33. Page 33 of the notification. Associate Professor. Yes. Associate Professor. Qualification as above, that is for the post of assistant professor is applicable to PhD or equivalent in appropriate discipline, post PhD publication, minimum of five years experience in teaching, research, industry, with two years post PhD experience is desirable. In case of architecture, professor practice, etc. Professor, qualification as above, post of associate professor applicable for post PhD publication, minimum two years, 10 years of teaching experience. This industrial experience of which at least high beer should be at the level of associate professor. To become a professor, at least a person must serve the institution as associate professor for five years. Its total span of service in different college is four years. My love, this is this regulation. I will show this judgment of the Honorable Supreme Court, which was uh, DG case versus LFDS. Before that, I will just call notification 2003 clarification. My Lord, page uh, this just after the judgment of the My Lord, just uh, page 74. Petition. Of the petition, to the read petition. Page 75. 75. Clarification on certain issues pertaining to pay scale and service condition for teachers of degree diploma level technical institution. Yes. Come, come to page 8. Page 8. General, general, first 1.1, general. Yes. Minimum length of service for eligibility to move into the grade of lecturer senior scale would be four years for those with PhD. Admittedly, has no PhD. Five years for those with MPhil, MTech, and six years for other at the level of lecturer and eligibility to move into grade of lecturer, senior grade, assistant professor, the minimum length of service lecturer, five years. That means to move up to senior grade lecturer, he, as he had the PhD, six years. But within four years, he became professor. Within four years, without PhD. <laughs> Next, 11, one, one, this is 2003 regulation. An assistant professor with a minimum of eight years of service in the grade will be eligible to be considered for appointment as a professor. It was earlier, 2003. And the Honorable Appes Court dealt with this para 1.4. Page 80, 1.4. The judgment upon on the point that it that is like BDPA. The one need to like judicial service. If someone has LLM, he should get some extra benefit. Like other service. Here, option was given that 
for within seven years, you will have to obtain PhD degree. Or if you have a PhD, 2010, it came to end. That is why Supreme Court held that. 2010, new regulation came. Therefore, in 2010, till 2010, he did not obtain PhD degree. Therefore, he can't, can't get that benefit. It, 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 that is clarified in this point. Lecturer in the senior scale having PhD degree, para 1.4. With three years of experience in teaching industry research at the level of lecturer, including the period passed in the grade of lecturer, senior scale, or equivalent. Lecturer in the senior scale having master degree with five years of experience in teaching industry research at the level of lecturer, including the period passed in the grades of lecturer, senior scale, or equivalent, such candidate will be required to obtain PhD degree within a period. Yes, it is our more crystal clear. First thing is that you must have five years of experience to become an assistant professor. He claimed that within two years or three years, I became the assistant professor. And that this is this, this para has been dealt with by the Supreme Court that within 10 years it will end. After that, from the date of the obtaining degree, you will get. And 2003 had been already ended in 2010. That is why Justice Paul judgment is there. My Lord, kindly come to page 110 of the retreats. That was January regulation. Earlier I placed 5th of March regulation. This was January, January regulation, which has been dealt with, my Lord. Even in that, can you look at para Roman 13. Associate professor completing three years of service in the AGP of rupees 9,000 and possessing PhD degree in the relevant discipline shall be eligible to be appointed and designated as a professor, subject to other condition of academic performance as laid down by the AICT. No teacher other than, other than those with a PhD shall be promoted, appointed, or designated as professor. <laughs> the payment of post professor shall be rupees 37,406 with AGP of rupees 10,000. He fraudulently claimed that my pay, AGP is 10,000. I, I was the professor without having any teaching experience. And this is 2010. You cannot escape. He, he kindly see he, when he got the PhD, his biodata. 51. In 2012. Huh? In 2012. 12, 8, August. And not only that, he said he got 75% mark. I never heard in my life or in academic circle that a person claimed that he got 75% mark in PhD. I know how to get a PhD degree, but in my family, many are PhD. I know how to get a PhD degree. Even it's very easy to get a PhD degree rather than high secondary, pass high secondary. Three marks. Nowhere in the world there is any provision for marking system is PhD. Man, he shows the actual caliber because he obtained degree from the private colleges. We know how the degree has been sold or something. It is not known fact. That is why he, does, he has no idea that there is no marking system in PhD. Now, can we, now this, yeah, you see regulations. Page 41. Page 41. The assistant professor. Now, para two, device for pay teacher in university and colleges. Yes. <laughs> Assistant professor, 6,000 AGP 
in pay band rupees 15,639,000. Actually, my, my Lord dealt with this first run, initial, initial run. Then what would be his pay band? 57,700. Academic, academic level 10. Yes. Next assistant professor assist at rupees seven thousand AGP in pay band same pay band fifteen thousand six hundred thirty nine thousand one hundred at academic level eleven with the rationalized NTPA of rupees sixty eight thousand nine hundred. Next, assistant professor, 8,000 AGP in post band, 15,639,100 at academic level 12 with rationalized NTP would be 79,800. As per UGC, unless only if one can apply to the post of register, he be attained academic level 11 and academic level 12. But according to my, my Lord's order on, on the view of wrong, well, in, this, in the language of Justice Chodochur, that ambused PI. Sometimes to deter a person to move the court, some ambused PIL is also fine. Yes. To allow the the wrongdoers to go. That is there, my love. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, page 58. It was the UGC regulation approved. Yes. Master degree with at least 50% of marks or equivalent grade in a point scale, with etc. At least 15 years of experience, assistant professor in the academic level 11. <laughs> and above or with eight years of service in the academic level 12. And above, including associate professor along with experience of education and administration. Now, this is 2017-18 regulation, but what happened, 2022, the university issued advertisement without knowing that there are only three posts as per IITC regulation, assistant professor, associate professor, and professor. That's why lecturer, leader, and administrator, but one thing is there, they said 7,000 AGP. 7,000 AGP means 11, level 11. Hmm. Sir, make sure that that My annex and last annex chapter. Page 124 of the repetition. Hmm. Page 122 hmm. of the repetition. Of the repetition. At least 15 years of experience as senior lecturer, reader, assistant professor in the AGP of 7000. This part, but this is. Page number 124. 122. Repetition, repetition. Minimum 13 years. Uh, minimum 15 years of. As senior lecturer, reader, and assistant professor. So we got page 124, Annexure P3. 124. 124. 
Yes. Hmm. Well, at least we just experienced a senior lecturer. To become a senior lecturer, I have shown my 2003 election, even assuming, and reader, there is no post of reader exists 2022. There is no senior lecture exists to 2022. Now, <clears throat> now, this notification of the university, according to you, it is not in consonance with the AACT notification. No. Yeah, yeah, 2010. 2010. 2010, there are only three. So, but AGP, AGP is correctly stated. Uh. Only AGP 7,000 is to, to achieve AGP academic level seven, 11, 7,000 scale must be there. So, 7,000 is there. In 2010 regulation. In 2010 regulation. But this was saying. So no man catch up. This is associated. That is the wrong decision. Yes. Everything is wrong. If everything is right, one can become a professor within uh, four years without PhD. My lord. Man, this is uh, the Honorable of Supreme Court. Page minus three, para first, para para eight. Yeah. But to clear out some misconception about many that uh, private engineering college, they can do whatever they like, they can confer a degree, they can elude, etc. They can't. To briefly state the issue in para eight first, my lord. Page three, para eight. To briefly state the issue involving the present litigation, we find prior to 15 3 2000. The minimum qualification required for the post of assistant professor was first class master in master's degree in appropriate branch of engineering technology. For the first time by notification 15 3 2000, the All India Council for Technical Education for short the ICTE, which is the authority to lay down the various norms, including the one pertaining to staff qualification prescribe the position of PhD with first class degree in bachelor or master level in the appropriate branch of engineering technology and technology as the minimum required qualification. Para 9. Prior to 2028-1989, that is the date when the government of India approved the prescriptions of qualification as recommended by the AICTE. The appointment and promotion were governed by the special rules prevailing in the state of Kerala, Yellow Kerala's case which came to be formulated on 2-9-1967. After the enactment of All India Council for Technical Education Act 1987, the whole of the technical education imparted by the various technical institutions were governed and controlled by the AICTE. The prescription of qualification as approved by the government of India on 28-2-1989 imperatively to be followed by all the technical institution as well as the respective state governments. The government of Kerala issued Geo Sachan Sat, adopting the qualification prescribed in government of India in discretion of Sachan Sat date, para 10. That means that the ICT regulation is binding on all institutions. As stated earlier, there was a change in the prescription of qualification from mere possessing of first class master degree in the appropriate branch of engineering technology not by notification dated 15 3, 2000. The AICT prescribed possession of PhD with first class degree in bachelor's or master level in the appropriate branch of engineering technology as the minimum required qualification. The state of Kerala came forward to amend the special rules in tune with the set prescription by its notification dated such and such. May I come to then, come to, kindly come to page seven, my lord, of the judgment, page seven of the judgment, page seven. That is related to Kerala, page seven. Ah, top, of the page. top of the page. We were inclined to countenance any of such submission. In as much as we were of the firm, the view that under section 10, 
bracket one, bracket sub bracket one of the AICTE Act, it was for the AICTE to lay down, lay down the norms in so far as, as is related to prescription of qualification for the teachers and other academic staffs in technical institution, and that such prescription even made by, the, by way of norm, the same would come into operation instantaneously. We were not in a position to accede to the submission that by virtue of section 23 and section 24 of the ICT Act, there would be a necessity for a gadget notification for the norms prescribed by the ICT to become enforceable in so far as it related to prescription of academic qualification. Mm. May I come to para 15. Be that as in May, the London Senior Council drew our attention to the notification dated 5 C 2010. But that, that notification, two. And admitted that the provision contained in the same notification, which came to be issued both under section 23 by one as well as section 10 by one and one by five of the ICT Act will cover the issue. Under the heading general in paragraph Roman 11, two, it contains a provision of the following. No one shall be eligible to be appointed, promoted, or designated as a professor unless he or she possesses a PhD and satisfies other academic condition as is down by the AICTE from time to time. This shall, however, not affect those who are already designated as professors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Page 10, my Lord. Para 24. In this case, in a stubborn way, you know, we do what. Having regard to our considered view, based on paragraph 2 of the notification dated 5C 2010 of the ICTE, namely that the prescription of possession of PhD as the minimum required qualification for anyone to be appointed, promoted or designated as a professor on after 5C10, such prescription will have no effect on those who are designated as a professor by to the state date. That will not pile that one. Right? This is uh, 2000. This is 2020, Volume 4, SCC. Well, I have to look. Well, there is one copy I have. It's over. Now, Volume 2. Back copy of section. 20 volume 4 SCC. Page 484. Para 11, my last count. Para 8. Abdul Kalam Tabakos. Para 11, is it? Yeah, para 11. Just one. The AICT Act 8. The AICT Act 87 has been enacted as explained briefly in Pala 4 of this order with an expletive power to set up an expert body to regulate the standard adopted in technical education and for establishment of the institution imparting such education. It is not a matter of dispute that AICT is the creation of the shared statute and the regulation framed by it in exercise of the power under AICT Act 87, 1987, carry the force of law. Indeed, it has been accepted by the London Council for the parties that 2010 AICT regulation would be, govern, would be governing law, holding the field, and would bind all parties, including the state of Chhattisgarh. The foremost question which was from the consideration whether 2000 Act regulation, in fact, made it a mandatory for 
candidate vying for the post of principal. That is not our issue. Our issue is that whether AICT regulation binding, binding or not. It is binding. In view of this regulation, this, this is a three judge bench decision uh, up uh, 2020 on column two, SCC page 564. Para forty six, Uncle Para forty six. The law is now fairly well stated. I got it, my para 46. Para 46. Is it? And in fact, my Lord, this is this judgment also days, the state of Tamil Nadu versus Adiyaman and other, wherein one question arose there, the, some vacancies in the student is there. Whether they, that uh, the, quali the, the, quali the qualification prescribed, whether it should be followed if there is a Larger vacancy. So this is for the provision that it should not dilute the norms and dilute the norms. It may enhance when 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 this notification stated that four years experience, five years experience, or six years experience that has to be followed. The college or university may say no, we don't. Ten years, but twenty years should be there. That liberty is given to them. Yes. But not below that one. Yes. Well, this is something, this is regarding the wrong advertisement. Citation <laughs> 2022, volume. 11 STC page, page C92. Actually, more 5.7 or 5.8. This is related to advertisement. Ma'am, the para advertisement for recruitment. 2022 volume 11. 5.7 and 5.8. Page 397. Page 397. Page 397. Under the ESI's recruitment regulation 2008, the contesting respondent became eligible for promotion after ESI's recruitment regulation 2015 came into effect. Thus, the oper operation of the ESI's regulation 2015 in regard to their service condition cannot be ignored and there can be no estoppel against the relation. This court, etc. Next paragraph. It is settled law that in the event of an inconsistency or conflict between a statutory provision and an executive instruction, the former must be given effect. The court in Union of India versus Asok Kumar Agawala held the government issued memorandum or executive instruction can be used only to supplant the statutory rule, but not to not to supplant them. Supplant. Supplant. Yes. So by hmm. well, now my final submission before this honorable court is that to this I rely another judgment. Well, 
Well, the justice, the justice of England, three hundred years back, in Coke Justice Coke, that fraud vitiates all judicial act, explicitial or temporal. So, if an order is based on fraud, I will just rely on one that way. That is two thousand twelve, volume one, SCC, page page four seventy six. <laughs> Para, starting from para twenty five. I will refer. Union of India versus Ramesh Gandhi, two thousand twelve, volume one, SCC, page four seventy six. This court on more than one occasion held that four fraud vitiates everything, including judicial acts. In S P Chenga Bhalwarian, twenty two versus Jagannath, this court observed as follows: para two. Fraud avoids all judicial acts, ecclesiastical or temporal. Observed Chief Justice Edward Coke of England about three centuries ago. It is the settled proposition of law that, law that a judgment or decree obtaining by planning fraud on the court is a nullity and non-est in the eye of law. Such a judgment or decree by the first court or by the highest court has to be treated as a nullity by every court, whether superior or inferior. It can be challenged in any court, even in a collateral proceedings. Para 26. Again, in A B Papaya Sastri versus Government of AP, this court reviewed the law on this position and reiterated the principle. In Para 38 and Para 39, it was held as such. The matter can be looked at from different angles as well. Suppose a case is decided by a competent court of law. After hearing the parties and an order is passed in favor of the applicant, plaintiff, which is upheld by all the courts, including the final courts, let us also think of a case where the court does not dismiss special petition, but after granting leave, decide the appeal finally by recording reason. Such order can only be uh, truly be said to be a judgment to which Article 141 of the Constitution applies. Likewise, the doctrine of merger also gets attracted. Uh, all order passed by the court authorities below therefore march in the judgment of this court and after such judgment it is not open to any party to the judgment to approach any court or authority to review recall or reconsider the order 39 the above principle however is subject to exception of fraud once it is established that the order was obtained by a successful party by practicing or playing fraud it is vitiated such order cannot be held legal valid Or in consonance with law, it is non-existent and non-est, and cannot be allowed to stand. This is the fundamental principle of principle of law. Needs no further elaboration. Therefore, it has been said that a judgment, decree, or order obtained by fraud has to be treated as nullity, whether by the court of first instance or by the final court, as it has to be treated as non-est by every court, superior or inferior. Para fifty one. If a judgment obtained by playing fraud on the court is a nullity, and it is to be treated as non-est by every court, superior or inferior, it would be strange logic to hear that an inquiry into the question whether a judgment was secured by playing fraud on the court by not disclosing the necessary facts relevant for the adjudication of the controversy before the court is impermissible. From the above judgment, it is clear that such examination is permissible. Such a principle. Is required to be applied with greater emphasis in the realm of public law, jurisdiction, public law jurisdiction, as the mischief resulting from this such fraud has larger dimension, affecting the larger public interest. Well, I come to para 29. Why am 29? Coming to the question as to what amounts to securing a judgment by playing fraud in the court, in such and such, this court categorically held the non-disclosure disclosure of all necessary facts. Tent amount to playing fraud on the court in para six of the judgment. It was held as follows: If he withholds withholds the vital document in order to gain advantage on the other side, then he would be guilty of playing fraud on the court as well as on the opposite party. But here in this writ petition and earlier earlier writ petition also, all the institution where from he received obtained degree in earlier writ petition. And in this petition also, where from he got degree, and where he served as what made him pleaded as a party, but none appeared before this court. 
because now AICT they have to give all the faculty members name their their number because what they do they basically something only pay some amount fifteen thousand twenty thousand at eight thousand and in the payroll aid and that is why in this application in this this application for the post of register not a single piece of paper supporting his teaching experience have been given. No pay scale has been given. No TDS deduction was shown. Yes. Had those documents was part of the application, then one should come to know actual what, how many years he was teacher in a particular institution, what was the pay scale. Another thing, that what I what happened, that was I was also made a ICTA party that, but that was because that was not made a party. That is another. Yes. Well, this is my respect to our mission. I think that, and I also think that in view of the this uh, just this judgment and earlier rural electricity and PP Rao and others, so there is no bar because this is a public inter litigation. Yes. Public inter, inter, inter litigation is not fettered by the technicalities. Correct. And not fettered by any technicalities, but it is a what is a. Uh, Sentient qui bhai, court can well this power, my lord. That is, this is my respect to submission, my lord. Yes. University and Lord uh, and the registrar. The, uh, and the university registrar and the vice chancellor. So, Lord Chief Lord, kindly look at uh, the course title. For three and yes. five. I and have six. present three. Then, Lord, uh, the five and six. Five and six. Yes. Lord, uh, before I take up the issue of res judicata, uh, let me, Lord, clarify your Lord Chiefs on facts. Lord, the, the post which was advertised mm -hmm. is for the purpose of appointing a registrar. Yes. It is not an academic post. It's a non-academic post. Yes. Now, Lord, please see the advertisement. This was there in the earlier petition. He has deliberately not annexed it in this because I find that some of the pages are taken from the earlier petition. The page numbers are very well. I, then I missed it. I am sorry. I am sorry. I am sorry. I am sorry. Very well. And it's the order of this honorable court. Correct. Correct. There is a public intelligence. I didn't. I didn't find it. So I correct myself. Yes, it is there. Your lordships may kindly see what are the requirement, essential qualification required. It says essential qualification. One is uniformly, you have uniformly good academic record with master's degree with minimum 55% marks or its equivalent grade in the point scale wherever a grading system is followed. Two, at least 15 years experience as senior lecturer, reader, assistant professor in AGP 7000 and above or with eight years service in the AGP 8000 and above including as associate professor, along with experience in educational administration in academic institutions like university or in an institute of higher learning, of which five years must be in university or in an institute of postgraduate study. Lord, I come under Roman two, And Lord, in so far as Roman two is concerned, your lordships can come back to page 51. Well, just one minute. Yes. Please come back to page 51. Yes. 
Yes. Look, uh, the Lotches will find the table, the second table. Mm. I go down. This was the post of lecturer. Then, Lord, he moved to senior lecturer. Mm. And then, Lord, to the post of assistant professor. Mm. And ultimately, the professor. And now, Lord, he has come to the non-academic post. He is mm. holding the post of registrar. Mm -hmm. Now, Lord, the pay scale, your Lotches will find the pay scale is there. Yes. What my learned friend is now trying to say that he did not have this qualification, he did not have that qualification, he could not have been placed in this scale, etc., etc. Now, Lord, with deepest of respect to my learned friend, I say that, Lord, this is not a subject matter in a public interest litigation. This is to be fought somewhere else. And there is a service matter pending where identical issues have been raised and Lord, there are affidavits exchanged on that. Disclosing his qualification, marks obtained, what post he had, service records, every little detail is di disclosed in that affidavit. This is not the writ petition. I'll give you a lot of the writ petition number. This is writ petition number WPA 6850 of 2023. This is still pending. And my learned friend was conducting the litigation on behalf of the university until some time passed. So he has full knowledge of this. I'm not talking about his client, but he himself has full knowledge. And Lord, the, I have, I've got the affidavit here with me. I can show your lordships from the affidavit that identical points were raised there. Yes. Now, Lord, lowering, Lord, the qualification in the advertisement. That is, Lord, what is submitted, I don't find. No, what is his submission is, as per the AICT regulations and UC, UGC, he could not have become a professor. He could not have become an assistant professor. That's his contention. Right. So, Lord, first, Lord, but I. The advertisement says something else. Absolutely different. All these issues that he has argued for the last 45 minutes are totally not relevant to the main petition. Not relevant at all. Now, Lord. So, according to you, those issues will be relevant if he was somebody challenges his position as a professor. Correct. In the BC Roy Engineering College. Absolutely. Absolutely. These are so, I, I, on the date when he responded to this advertisement, he was an assistant professor of an AGP of 7,000, more than 7,000. Yes. His AGP was 12,420 US in the pay band of 12,420, yes. 18,300. Yes. And Lord, the issue today before your Lordship is in this public interest litigation, whether Lord he qualified in terms of the advertisement. And the other issue that he did not have eight years of service in the AGP of 8,000 was the subject matter of the earlier. Edition. Earlier. Uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll show you, Lord Chief, that those orders, Lord, I'll, I'll place, Lord, the, my Lord's order. Whether he, he qualified for those uh, scales, etc., they are, they were absolutely not covered by the earlier petition. But before that, May I just take your lordship's lord once at page 108. This is AICT regulation lord dated 22nd January 2010. Yes. Now lord please come to the heading general. There shall be only three designations in respect of teachers in universities and colleges, namely assistant professor, associate professor, and professors. However, there shall be no change in the present designation in respect of library person. So, as on 2010, hmm. the lecturers or senior lecturers were all redesignated as associate uh, assistant professor. professors. 
Now, Lord, please take note of Roman 2. Yes. No one shall be eligible to be appointed, promoted, or designated as professor unless he or she possesses a PhD and satisfies other academic conditions as laid down by AICT from time to time. This shall, however, not affect those who are already designated as professor. So, my Lord, there was an existing system. That system was being changed. So basically, Lord, the redesignation came as associate professor because, Lord, he was holding the post of a senior lecturer. And obviously, Lord, he was redesignated as the associate professor. Now, Lord, my learned friend, Lord, read page 109. I would like to Lord, read 109 once again for your lunch. Yes. Kindly take A first, assistant professor, etc. One, Roman one. Persons entering the teaching profession in technical institution shall be designated as assistant professor and shall be placed in pay band such and such. Such and such lecturers already in service of pre revised scale of such and such shall be redesignated as assistant professors with the said AGP of six. So, Lord, redesignation stands in a different footing. Hmm. Yes. And it also says in Roman 3 assistant professors possessing master's degree in the relevant branch discipline as defined for technical education shall be eligible for AGP 7000 after completion of five years service as assistant professor. Now, Lord, as I said, this is not a Lord, public interest litigation as to my previous employment or my grant of pay scales in the previous employment. This is supposed to be a public interest litigation challenging my appointment as registrar in the university. And Lord, the, as I showed from the advertisement, this is the qualification that I, had, that I had to possess. And there can't be any dispute that I have qualified for each of these under Roman 1 1. Roman 2. Of the notification. Of the issue. notification. And we are really concerned with this. Now, Lord, whether this notification is bad or, Lord, this has not been published properly, those are issues, Lord, should be taken in a private interest, uh, private litigation. And Lord, that too by persons who are affected by it, not by a public interest litigation. And I say that there is no infirmity in the advertisement because the advertisement your lordship will find is strictly in terms of the regulation. Your lordships may kindly take page 13, Lord, uh, four once. 13, Lord, is the UGC regulation, 2nd November 2017. Yes. Page 34, Lord, kindly see Roman 3. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, yes, Roman 3. The existing minimum qualification for direct recruitment to the post of registrar, etc. shall continue. Page 34. This is, Lord, part of UGC regulation of 2017. Lord, so long I was in the technical education, I was governed by the AICT rules. Kazi Nazrul University is a regular university where I am appointed as the registrar. Therefore, Lord, the UGC regulation will be applicable. Mm. Please come to Lord Roman 3, page 34, Roman 3. The existing minimum qualifications, yes. direct recruitment post, etc. shall continue. Consequent to this ministry's order, the minimum qualification for direct recruitment of registrar, finance officer, controller examination shall be as follows. It says, kindly, my Lord, come to B. At least 15 years experience as assistant professor in the academic level and above or eight years of service academic levels so and so and above including as assistant professor along with experience educational administration. Now, Lord, your lordships may kindly see the advertisement. There, Lord, only the scale is mentioned. Hmm. Excepting, Lord, uh, this experience of assistant professor, hmm. they've included, Lord, lecturer and senior lecturer because, Lord, that is a redesignation post. 
Therefore, Lord, they have included that. And Lord, in so far as this academic level is concerned, they have given a pay scale. Yes. And Lord, I can show them, Lord, several notifications issued by other universities for recruitment of registrar. They are, they are following the same pattern. Mm. There is no relaxation of any norms. Lord, as has been vehemently argued by my letter. Lord, as an example, I can show them, Lord, Bakura University. When not the recruitment has taken place, your lordships will find identical. Please see the essential qualification. Roman 2. Yes. So, Lord, there, there is no exception. Now, Lord, please have a look at your Lordship's order. I'll, I'll just trouble your Lordship once. Please come to page 71, paragraph 2. This was the case. The petitioner's case is that person entering the teaching profession in universities and colleges shall be designated as assistant professors and shall be placed in the pay band such and such. Referring to the credentials of the private respondent, registrar, it is submitted that he had entered service as a lecturer in Bengal College of Engineering and the pay band such and such. And in terms of the AICT regulation, he could not have drawn AGP 6000 as stipulated in clause A of notification except. These arguments were advanced. And then Lord, your Lordship dealt with this Lord, uh, at page 72. Kindly, my Lord, see, my Lord, the last four, four, five lines at page 72, sentence starting with the word in any event. Yes. Now, my Lord, the issue with regard to res judicata in a public interest litigation. Because my submission is that, my Lord, once your Lordship deals with a public interest litigation, it becomes a judgment in rain. And therefore, Lord, by setting up other people, one just can't try to reopen Lord, the issues over and over again. Lord, uh, I first Lord, rely on 2006, I just rely on one judgment, 2006, volume 4, SCC, page 680. This is a three-page judgment. No, sorry. This is plot. I I give. I've given the wrong page. Not it should be six eight three. Yes. This is a three way judgment. Kindly, my lord, come to paragraph thirty two. Lord, your lordship will. Fine, from paragraph 24, there were allegations of fraud, misrepresentation, same as made in this petition. And Lord, please come to paragraph 32. Res judicata is a doctrine based on larger public interest and is founded on two grounds. One being max, maxim such and such, no one ought to be twice vexed for one and the same cause. And second, public policy, there ought to be an end to the same litigation. It is well settled that section 11 of the Code of Civil Procedure is not the, is not the foundation of the principles of res judicata, but merely statutory recognition thereof, and hence, the section is not to be considered exhaustive of the general principle of law. The main purpose of doctrine is that once a matter has been determined in a formal proceedings, it should not be open to parties to re-agitate the matter again and again. Section 11 of CPC recognizes this principle and forbids a court from trying any suit issue which is res judicata recognizing both cause of action estoppel and issue estoppel. There are two issues that we need to consider. One, whether the doctrine of res judicata as a matter of principle can be applied to public interest litigations. And second, whether the issues and findings in Somseka Reddy constitute a res judicata for the present litigation. Then, Lord, explanation six 
uh, is uh, taken into consideration. Then load uh, uh, the uh, forward construction company's judgment load uh, uh, is is taken note of. Then load your lordships may kindly come to paragraph thirty seven. Explanation four is also taken note of. Then load paragraph thirty eight. The spirit behind explanation four is brought out, brought out in the pithy words of the Vigram, so and so. The plea of res judicata applies except in special cases, not only to points upon which the court was actually required by the parties to form an opinion and pronounce a judgment, but to every point which properly belonged to the subject of litigation and which the parties, exercising re reasonable diligence, might have brought forward at the time. Then, Lord, paragraph 39. Uh, the English case is taken note of. I think that on the authorities to which I will refer, it would be accurate to say that res judicata for this purpose is not confined to, to the issues which the court is actually asked to decide, but that it covers issues or facts which are so clearly part of the subject matter of the litigation and so clearly could have been raised that it would, have, it would be an abuse of the process of the court to allow a new proceedings to be started in respect of them. Then, Lord, uh, paragraph 40, the judgment in Greenhall was approvingly referred by this court in state of UP was Nawa Hussain, combining all these principles, a constitution bench of this court in direct recruits, etc., expounded the principle laid down in forward construction by holding that an adjudication is conclusive and final, not only as to actual matter determined, but as to every other matter which the parties might and ought to have litigated and have had decided as incidental to or essentially connected with the subject matter of the litigation. And every matter coming into the legitimate purview of the original action, both in respect of the matters of claim and defense, thus the principles of constructive res judicata underlying explanation 4 of section 11 of the Code of Civil Procedure was applied to the writ case. We accordingly hold that the writ case is fit to be dismissed on the ground of res judicata. Then your lordships will kindly Lord, uh, take note of uh, paragraph 47 and 48, and also 49. Yes. And 48 Lord clearly says that what is the principle behind that explanation for? Yes. So, Lord, and also kindly take note of paragraph 50, which is the conclusion. Yes. Basically, Lord, it's an old wine in a new bottle. Setting up somebody, Lord, is trying to re-argue the case, which is, Lord, is resisted by the Honorable Supreme Court. It says that the issue of finality, there is, is trying, try, try, there's an attempt to reopen the issue of finality. Now, Lord, on the fraud and other things, Lord, I, I don't get into because I don't know how fraud arises. There is not a single line of fraud, pleading of fraud in the writ petition. Yes. Lord, my learned friend has raised, Lord, strong reliance on this judgment of 2022, Volume 4, SCC. If your Lordship, Lord, kindly. Take note of what are the HHO. I yes. believe, Lord, my learned friend handed up uh, 2022, Volume 4, SCC 764. This was a case where, Lord, one was seeking registration of a case by CBI. Mm. Yes. Lord, your lordships may kindly come to paragraph 27.
and take note of paragraph 28 and article 32 petition was summarily dismissed without not any reasons. Yes. And the second article 32, which was filed, that your lordships will get from paragraph 29. Then, Lord, uh, the uh, learned judges, Lord, had taken note of, Lord, the various judgments. Ultimately, your lordships will find that the court found that in the earlier round, the court did not decide anything. Which paragraph? Paragraph, Lord, uh, kindly see 30... 35. 5. Kindly come to paragraph 35. While determining the applicability of the principles of rejudicata, the court must be conscious that grave issues of public interest are not lost in the Absolutely. woods merely because a petition was initially filed and dismissed without a substantial adjudication on merits. There is a trend of poorly pleaded public interest litigation being filed instantly following a disclosure in the media with a conscious intention to obtain dismissal from the court and preclude uh, genuine litigants from approaching the court in public. But this is not the case here. Your Lordship has heard the matter substantively. And after substantive hearing, your Lordship had passed that order. So therefore, Lord, there is no question of Lord, any media. And this was never Lord, published in media. This is not a media issue at all. Appointment of a registrar, which is Lord, Pending in, in a pending writ petition, the issues are squarely covered there. First attempt, your lordships did not permit the writ petition, a second attempt now. And Lord, I don't get into the other judgments that my learned friend has cited. They are squarely not applicable. In ap academic field, the court's view, I am not disputing at all because this is an appointment of a registrar. Yes. Lord, these are my submissions. I was just not take much of time. May I Excuse kindly me. take your lot? Yes. My Lord, Mr. Kaur was harming that this is non-academic course. Register of the university is a very vital post. Because that is why in advertisement, the word used, lecturer, reader, not used as a management character. They have not asked for that a person of corporate world should also come and join as a registrar. My Lord, last come, come to page 53 of his application. Public petition. What is stated? It is his own declaration. Last declaration to be signed by the candidate. Mm. I hereby declare that the information given by me in the application is the complete and correct to the best of my knowledge and belief, and that the nothing has been concealed or distorted thereof at if at any stage I am found to have been concealed, distorted, any information or given any false statement, my application appointment shall take to be summarily liable to be summarily reject or terminable without notice to the compensation. My Lord, I, this, if those, those qualification is not required according to Mr. Kaur, then what was prompted him to write that, yes, I was a professor, I was a senior professor, I do. We, we will consider that. Another thing, my Lord, you, you are talking about public interest litigation first. My last in Kondashami's and Ajay House's case, the Supreme Court held even a busy body because it is a person is holding a public post. He is usurping a public post. Therefore, at best, a busy body should not get cost. But a delay, latches, or busy body won't, because this is Justice Kondashami, but Ajay House's case. My Lord. If needed, I will cite just one paragraph and just show you. 
and my lord even high court rule i am not talking about in a series of when supreme court even a private interest in raise of public importance that can be well, this is the bulk of constitutional judgment uh, 2009 volume 10 another thing my lord i'll just do this module to the we we get just yes please pass on the citation sir just write to boy the bulk of 2009 volume 7 2009 volume 7 is there sir no my like there is one copy is there right yes sir right page 1 page 1 109 no i read the result of the Well, indisputably, prepare at one zero nine, one zero eight, one zero eight, one zero nine. Indisputably, a writ petition, even at the instance of a busybody, for issuance of a writ of warrant, questioning the appointment of chairman of a state commission made in terms of such and such, would be maintainable for the appointment of a purpose. The eligibility criteria is laid down in such and such. as also question as to whether in making such an appointment the state consulted the chief justice of the high court as envisaged under the proviso appended to call for consideration in supreme court bar association the object of selecting the best men to uh, con constitute the no, no, how is this relevant sir well because this edict of warrant no, are, are you aware of the facts of this case <laughs> yes 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 sir are you aware of it this case ah You read the first couple. That is appointment, which is on the subject. First of all, right? This is not uh, absolutely. Really? Yes, we have heard the submission so on so. Judgment reserved. Incidentally, who is the writ petitioner here? She has just said she is a citizen of India, public spirit. She did her post graduate degree. She is an officer of the government, a social worker, and she is a. Oh, 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 oh. Did she also apply for this? No, 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 no. That is not that. Why should we? Because who is a writ of warrant? Well, anyone can find. No, no. In, we just a query from the court. Yeah, my lord. She has not disclosed to her who she is. And that is there. Well, because she is did her post graduate in anthropology. She is very now not did a doctorate, so she knows the details. She is not given, but she has only challenged it once. Normally, details will be given if they. Well, that is that is their normal. If they are so uh, once highly once highly economically. Uh, qualified. Uh, they shouldn't feel shy of disclosing <laughs> that. They should be, in fact, proud of. My lord, that's one, one judgment. My lord, you know, knows Sir Faisal. Even I think judgment like that. Even if you leave the court passes any order in just forgetfulness of a statutory provision, the ju the judgment is not binding upon the same court. So, Mister Barse Yang, we will consider. Okay. Thank you. Next, I don't know five. Five and six. Five and six. Like five, five and six, both matters will not may kindly be taken up together because <laughs> same issues are involved. Supplementary bill. Number this panchayat election matters are repeatedly troubling my lord. The lord, lord, I think uh, save democracy. You have to save the court. Yes, court strength. <laughs> there was a court, court, court also saves the democracy. They were there in the same line. Now, lord, to be very brief on facts, my lord, that the free and fair election is the my lord foundational basis for. Our democratic republic. Now, if that foundational basis is will not <clears throat> attacked by the authorities in power, including the election commissioner, then obviously we have no other way but to approach the honourable court to ensure that these 
the democratic republic is saved and sustained. Well, that <clears throat> I've given the detailed facts, what had happened after this court had passed an order and the order of this court lot was skipping this in mind so far I could read that it is the foundational duty to ensure free and fair poll. Therefore, the court has intervened and directed them for deployment of central forces to ensure free and fair. Now here we find Millard, in many cases, in many areas, the intending Millard candidates were prevented physically from filing nominations. In one of such cases, I seen the order passed by the uh, election commissioner, the Honorable could directed him to consider, he says, oh, 144 was the area. Therefore, I'm concerned only with that. If anything has happened beyond that area and they could not file nomination, this is uh, not within my domain. I shall place that order also if necessary. Rako. And Milot, on the last date of the filing of nomination, huge number of nomination papers are filed, which is not physically possible. And the resultant effect is we have seen someone who is in uh, Saudi Arabia has gone for hot pilgrimage as file nomination. Now, some nominations paper, which I've seen are not filled in as per the requirement of the law. And then again, Lord, the persons who had the courage to file the nomination, Lord, defying all these obstacles, were forced to withdraw their nomination. In one area known as Dashpur in Howrah district, it was apparent Lord, from the video recording that the police people were enforcing the lady to withdraw the nomination. And when the lady refused, the police people in the middle lodged complaint against the lady and her associates. These are all there. Now, my humble submission would be, Milot, yes, in some areas there were nominations, Milot, they would uh, rather not forced to or would not, could not be forced to. The election may proceed. I, I am not, Milot at all demanding that that election should also be stalled. But not in these areas where the nominations were not allowed to be filed. But there are cases also where not, the candidates approached the Honorable High Court. The Honorable High Court directed police to give police security in the escort to file nomination. But their nominations were ultimately accepted. And they say that this is filed beyond 3 p.m. In spite of having the order of the court giving them the police protection to file the nomination. And these were those were not rejected on the plea that you have filed after 3 p.m. But there are cases, I will show, that the Milot, even the scheduled caste certificates which are generated, I use the expression with a little bit of caution, after 3 p.m were accepted since those belong to Milot, the ruling political group. Now, these are the foundational facts on which I approach this honorable court. And what I would appeal to your lordship, Milot, to consider. So far, I was trying to Milot, go to the judgments filed, uh, delivered by the Supreme Court in election matters. With deepest of respect, Milot, those election matters judgment ratio would not be applicable in case of panchayat. Those election matters, Milot, the judgments were delivered, keeping in mind that there will be a constitutional crisis if the election is not held and it is delayed, protracted. Therefore, hands off from the election during the election process, but subsequently, the Supreme Court judgments are there that no court can intervene. I will rely on those. But this Panchayat, Milot, is governed by the Post Bengal Panchayat Act, which is a state legislation. In spite of the fact that Article, uh, the Constitution, my Lord, was amended, giving them the status of a third tier government, having given the constitutional protection, they are third tier government. But yet, they are subject to states' regulation. 
And there are provisions in the Panchayat Act that the government, in its executive power, can supersede any Panchayat, can rescind any decisions of the Panchayat bodies. Therefore, these Panchayats, my Lord, cannot be equated with, my Lord, the two tier governments. I'll say, my Lord, the first tier is the union government, which is only, my Lord, governed by the constitution provision, and the second tier government is the state. State government is not, my Lord, governed by the central government's, my Lord, administrative power. Well, the law passed by parliament, Lord, is applicable as per the constitutional norms. But the state, the central government cannot say that I resigned your decision and I supersede you. No. Article, Article 356 is a different consideration and that's done by the president of India under the recommendation of the government, go governor, not on the recommendation of the executive governor. Now, these are the distinct uh, areas on which I appeal to your lordship Lord, to consider the uh, issues. My humble prayer in this petition, I will uh, develop and demonstrate that the election of these areas should be done afresh. The nomination should be allowed to be filed without any interruption. That would be Lord, uh, an example to the authorities that your duty, you have to discharge. And in our case, my Lord, I say that in spite of the order of the Honorable Court, the Election Commission deliberately delayed and then went up to the Supreme Court. Supreme Court, my Lord, did not accept his contention. In the meantime, all these, my Lord, misgivings but were allowed to, my Lord, take place, thereby vitiating the basic principle of free and fair election, that to the third tier level of government. Now, my Lord, uh, <clears throat> first I draw my last attention, my Lord, to the Constitution, because it will be argued that this is also a constitutional body. Kindly come to, my Lord, Chapter 9A. Article 9 Nine well, this chapter nine, my Lord, part nine, sorry, not chapter nine, part nine, under Article 243, my Lord, the Panchayats are constituted, and several powers are, my Lord, delineated under this act. Then kindly come to, my Lord, 243K. Yes. Elections to the panchayats, the superintendence, direction, and control of preparation of electoral rules for and the conduct of all elections to the panchayats shall be vested in a state election commission consisting of a state election commissioner to be appointed by the governor, subject to the provisions of any law made by the legislature. That I would emphasize my argument on this. Subject to the provisions of any law made by the legislature of a state, the conditions of service and tenure of office of the state election commissioner shall be such as the governor may by rule determine. Provided that the state election commissioner shall not be removed from his office except in like manner and in like ground as a judge of high court, and the conditions of service of the state election commissioner shall not be varied to his disadvantage after his appointment. The governor of a state shall, when so requested by the state election commission, make available to the state election commissioner such stuff. Now, like this is the obligation upon the governor. As may be necessary for the discharge of functions conferred on the state election commission by clause one, 
subject to the provisions of this constitution, the legislature of a state may, by law, make provision with respect to all matters relating to or in connection with elections to the panchayats. Therefore, the control of the state over the election commission and even also for the purpose of conduct of election it remains with the state executives through remote control. Now kindly come to 243O. Barred to interference by courts in electoral matters, notwithstanding anything in this constitution, the validity of any law relating to delimitation of constituencies or allotment of seats that is not applicable to our case. No election to any panchayat shall be called in question except by an election petition presented to such authority and in such manner as is provided for by or under any law made by the legislature which is of a state. Now kindly takes up you know, the law which is prevailing here so far the panchayat elections are concerned. Well, I will show you know, my point of argument would be that this is really fraud. The entire thing is a fraud on the statute and the constitution itself. <clears throat> kindly takes up Panchat Election Act. Election Act. Yes. Now, I'm going to kindly come Lord, to the relevant provisions. Kindly come to Lord, section 64. If at any election to a Gram Panchayat, Panchayat Shamiti Jila Parishad or Shiliguri Mahaka Parishad, the number of contesting candidates is more than the number of seats to be filled in the constituency, a poll shall be taken. The number of such candidates is equal to the number of seats to be filled in the constituency. The Panchayat Returning Officer shall forthwith declare the prescribed manner of all such candidates to be duly elected to fill these seats. C, the number of such candidates less than the number of seats to be filed, filled in a constituency, the Panchayat Returning Officer shall forthwith declare in the prescribed manner all such candidates to be duly elected. Now, this is these are the provisions, Milot, which is taken, Milot, sheltered to by the uh, contesting parties. Milot, I do not finger to anybody. I am talking on law. That if I can prevent someone from filing the nomination, I would be automatically declared elected. Now that the question comes, what are the powers of the election commissioner? Can I turn to the next chapter 10? Chapter 10, section 66 empowers the election commissioner and the nomination. Adjournment of poll in emergencies. If at an election, the proceedings at any polling station provided under section 27 for the poll are interrupted or obstructed by any riot or open violence or have if at any election it is not possible to take the poll at any polling station on account of any natural calamity or any other sufficient cause, the presiding officer for such polling station at the material point of time shall announce an adjournment of the poll to a date to be notified later. Therefore, the power of the Lord deferring the poll is within the statute. Under certain circumstances which are mentioned, 
Therefore, this cannot be said that the election commission doesn't have any power. Yes. Then we'll followed by section 67. 68. Therefore, the inherent power of an election commissioner appointed without for the purpose of holding panchayat elections empowers him to defer the polls when Milord, the situation is such that the polling could not be ensured. But the polling is the foundation on which even the legislatures were very much concerned and interested. Now, <clears throat> kindly come to Milord. Very important about nomination of candidates. How to conduct election part six. Milad, the notification has come. Now not, I am not going to the tidbits of the notification. Which, which section? Milad, this is chapter six. Kindly come to section 46. Chapter seven, part six, chapter seven. Pa part six, yes. Part six, chapter seven. I'm thankful to an advocate. The 46 presentation of nomination papers and requirement for valid nomination. On or before the date appointed under clause A of section 43, each candidate shall either in person or by his proposal between the hours as we prescribed, not can underline this. If I can somehow other manage someone and force him not to enter. The hours is over, you are out. And that's the way the uh, officers are functioning. I will demonstrate. <clears throat> Between the hours as may prescribe deliver to the panchayat returning officer at the place specified in this behalf in the notice issued under section 44, a nomination paper completed in the prescribed form and signed by the candidate by any voter of the constituents as proposal, provided that no nomination paper shall be delivered on a holiday. Then two, without prejudice to the generality of the provisions contained in subsection one, if the commission on receipt of complaints from the intending candidates or the recognized political parties either from or through the district panchayat election officer or its own machinery or any other agency is satisfied that there is a reasonable apprehension of prevention of prevention of or obstruction to the intending candidates from making nominations at the place or before the authority of the Gam Panchayat and Panchayat Samiti constituencies specified notice under section 44. The commission may by order issue a direction to the Panchayat returning officer appointed for any block to depute one assistant Panchayat returning officer at the office of the subdivisional officer having jurisdiction for receiving nomination papers within the specified date and hour from the intending candidates for one or more Gram Panchayats or Panchayat Samiti constituencies as the case may be. Provided the commission may also by the said order extend the last date for making nomination for one day and also direct that all the nomination papers received under subsection one and two of any Gram Panchayat or Panchayat Shaviti constituency, as the case may be, shall be taken up by Panchayat returning officer for scrutiny of all such nomination papers at one sitting, one after another, in terms of the notice under section 44. Provided further, on receipt of such order of commission, the panchayat returning officer shall arrange to display a notice accordingly in his office and in the office of the subdivisional office officer and the district panchayat election officer and shall also arrange for wide public city within the polling area. Now, Milad, 46-2, Milad, is a situation where Milad, the parties, Milad, had prior apprehension and intimation to the commission. Then the commission will not may take steps. But not if the situation is that there is no prior intervention on the day on the spot. Right. But therefore, there is no remedy for them. But not my, my submission would be that that would be playing a fraud on the statute. When the statute empowers you, the statute makers not, could not foresee everything. But you have to get the essence of it. When the statute empowers you, to take certain steps to ensure 
that the filing of nomination is not prevented. That is the essence of this set. You take steps. But they do not take steps. And in a written order, we are about to But when the Honorable High Court with us sitting in constitutional jurisdiction is directing that the intending candidate should be escorted to the spot for filing nomination, they are prevented. Their nominations are accepted by the officer, scrutiny is made, symbol is declared, then the final officer says, no, no, your nomination was accepted after 3 p.m. But does it not go against without the, the real intention of the statute, 46.2? I just will not these two orders for consideration in this context very important. Now will I just read this? How the election commission considers? Yes. Come on, kindly come to page two of this order by the election commission, which he passed after this court directed him to consider the grievances. I'm like this in Chopra, like this is in the public domain. But while they were not going to file nomination, there was a gunshot, two people died. In that background, also the court directed. Now, the petitioner stated that due to resistance by the members of ruling dispensation in the state of West Bengal in connivance with the goons and local police authorities, none of the political parties nor candidates associated with them were able to file a nomination in the Chopra block. But these are all admitted position. If somebody can come and say that I was blind, I didn't see. That apart, it's an admitted position. And that on the 15th day of June 2023, the petitioner hearing had made representations addressed to the West Bengal State Election Commissioner narrating the entire state of affairs. In such representation, it was stated that on the self-same date, there was a large-scale violence and two persons were shot dead and more than 15 others sustained bullet. Page two of this order. Sorry, I skipped one page. Yes. The page two without the, the first paragraph which begins, not the continuing one. Yes, yes. The entire state of affairs in such representation, it was stated that on the self same day, there was a large scale violence and two persons were shot dead and more than 15 others sustained bullet injuries. And such violence was caused at the behest of the ruling dispensation in the state of West Bengal. It was found from the records that the complaint as annexed at the annexure P4 of the said it was received through email from petitioner on 15th June in the afternoon. It was taken into grievance management portal of the commission on the same date and district magistrate, Uttar Dinajpur was asked to dispose the same immediately. This is the commission's direction upon the DM. And send action taken report on 19th of June, the action taken report was received under the signature of DM Uttar Dinajpur. It encloses report from the IC Chopra. But these persons who could not be given the protection of the report from him. Can you see the fantastic report? Nomination filing process under quotation. In uh, upcoming panchayat election, in connection. in connection with upcoming panchayat election was started on 9th of June 23. It was closed on 15th of June 23. During the period of nomination filing process, a large scale of police personnel were deployed around the nomination venue, can you see the irresponsible uh, action? 
Chopra block office and the norms of 144 promulgated by the State Election Commission were strictly implemented with a view to conduct free and fair nomination filing process and strong action was taken against the violators of norms declared State Election Commission. Route march with the help of armed police force were conducted in order to keep free and fair atmosphere around the Chopra BDO office. So that every person can reach the block office for submitting their nomination papers and strong action were taken against miscreants involved in any type of hindrance against candidates who were willing to submit nomination in respect of upcoming Panchayat election. The report of district magistrate dated 24th June is perused carefully. The report indicates that in conformity with the notification of election issued by the State Election Commission, the process of nomination started at the office of the Block Development Officer Chopra, being the office of the returning officer, and at the office of the subdivision officer Islampur, so and so. In the said report, it has further been mentioned that no incident of forceful deterrence from filing nomination was reported, kindly underlined, within the vicinity of nomination venue of Chopra. Reports of SDO Islampur Chopra were annexed to the state report of the district magistrate. The detailed reports relating to the arrangements made at the nomination venue, promulgation of section 140 of the CRPs within one kilometer of nomination venue, deployment of police personnel around the nomination venue to prevent any kind of violation of norms and the factual reports on the filing of nominations and so. Decisions with reasons. On careful examination of the papers on record and reports as mentioned above, it appears that action was taken by the DM and the police authorities for free and fair nomination filing and a strong action was taken against miscreants involved in any type of hindrance against candidates who are willing to submit nomination. Further route march with the help of armed police were conducted to keep a free and fair atmosphere. Section 144 was promulgated by the district magistrate nomination venue but I am repeatedly without pain to read this. The election commission Miller, seems to have Miller, his jurisdiction only the nomination venue and the 144 declared by him and he is satisfied with the DM's report. The nomination venue, nothing's happened. But he's on the way, somebody is killed. Two were killed, 11 were injured. Might be Miller, 200 were killed. Situation might have so worsened. The election commission is no. I, I am concerned with the nomination venue. If you can enter the nomination venue, then only enforcement of free and fair filing of nomination. But how can the uh, election commission have a vigil over the entire but district? Election commission is in charge of entire administration of free and for, fair poll. That That's is my lot of help. Suppose uh, in privacy, somebody is threatened. Well, this is not privacy. Well, I, this is not. So, the, that's why the commission, the, over the page, it says no representation by any intending candidate who might have been hindered have come to the commission during the nomination phase. But this is wrong. Without, in fact, they have been harping upon that. Even in 2018, though Honorable Supreme Court extended. None came with the election petition. Not, that would not come with an election petition. I will cite. Today, two people have come. Yes. Two people have come. We issued direction and uh, calling call for a report. But why this scenario? If X or Y candidate has been prevented from filing the nomination, what deters him from approaching the commission saying that I was physically prevented? I was threatened yesterday. I dare not step out of my house. Etc. That was done here. But here, this repetition was filed by who is not a candidate. Well, they were kidnapped and rescued mm. after 15 dislocations. Then this incident. Now, this is supplementary The election commission becomes not in control of the entire state administration for the purpose only free and fair. That's the judgment of this court and Supreme Court, too. Now, that this is, I could have. The other matter. They produce some data with, to say that the percentage of withdrawing the entire state is less than 10 percent, 9.1 or 9.2 percent, which was far less than two, the scenario in 2018. 
Now, that 2018, if that is the basis, then what I am very uh, pained to say, then there's no question of any election. And that this is no satisfaction on the part of the constitutional authorities to say that this time is 10%. Uh, the, no, that, the can, uh, canning block one. In that case, tomorrow the matter is coming up. Yes. For a report. That's the submission of Mr. Dattu, an oral submission based on instruction, saying that this time it is only 9.2%. Uh, no, the I, state, I, it's nothing alarming. Well, this is very, very sorry state of affairs. Again, I say constitutional authorities, but this is election. But the election, I say, foundation of our Millard democracy and basic structure of constitution. There is no Millard compromise, 10%, therefore, this is ignorable. But why not the 100% free and fair? Why Millard would they be forced Millard withdrawal? We are Millard intending to that. And if Millard this forced withdrawal and will the forceful restraint nomination Millard can be stopped if the election is held again on this. By that, Millard, neither the election process will interfere. Nor without the law uh, regarding this 46 1 46 2. In the first judgment, we have taken a decision that's not an I have an explanation like that. No, no, that's second the second judge decision. First decision we have held uh, to what extent the election commission can extend by exercising power under 46 2 and uh, read with uh, 45 1 to what is the window granted. To that that order has become final because supreme court has affirmed yes. the judgment yes though not at your instance at their instance well, we cannot go to supreme court no, no. no <laughs> that, that interpretation that, that interpretation i will rely upon and mother i shall fact, when mr uh, uh, guru krishna kumar argued he said that uh, d horse whatever has been the notification under 45 the commission has power to postpone in fact, if our, my memory is right, the interpretation given was that window given is only one day. Beyond that, the date fixed by the election, I mean, the, by the notification issued by the state, that cannot be altered. If that has to be altered it under 46.1, then it is, can be done only in consultation with the state. That is our finding in that. Right, so. Now, will that, I, that finding, will that I shall will that rely upon and again also will not rely upon the Supreme Court judgment to show that by that process you cannot really make the statute and constitution frustrated. But if the commission will not, does not act and 46 lordship has every will not, authority will not, to differ with the earlier view if, if I can uh, persuade the lordship. Uh, in so. fact we said that in terms of 43.2 yes. the decision shall be only if the state were, State government because it will tantamount to uh, revoking the earlier notification. The notification fixes a schedule and uh, you fix the date of poll. So, that within that, the power given to the commission is for one day. So, if the commission wants to, what do you say, uh, postpone the election for certain areas. Then it can be done only under 43.2 in consultation of the state. May I just try to say, uh, submit this? The issues and areas which are not governed by the statute, the Supreme Court says, Commission has residuary power under the constitutional power. But 46.2 below contemplates a situation when where somebody is. Or, yes, somebody reports. So, somebody below has the apprehension that it might, might be prevented. or obstruction. Yes. Sending candidate from no making a nomination. Yes. Therefore, Mullah, this should be the candidates, Mullah, the prior knowledge which is intimated to him and Mullah, he can extend. And Mullah, this extension, Mullah, for one day, it would Mullah, depend on Mullah, the issues placed before him. But if such a situation arises, Mullah, that the candidate is faced with this situation at the dead end hour, what would happen? This is not governed by the statute. There, Miller, the Supreme Court says that the residuary power of the commission under the constitution is there. He can pass any order, which will not violate the statute. 46 to once again, logically reads with me, yes. contemplates a situation where, Miller, the persons had prior information. Without prejudice to the generality of the provisions contained in subsection one, 
if the commission on receipt of complaints from the intending candidates, normally the intending candidate goes to file nomination at 2 p.m. on the last day, he's prevented. What is the intending candidate's the provision to complain to him? So therefore, he, what he can do is immediately depute one assistant panchayat. Suppose for insufficient time, as you said, 100,000 people come. 3 p.m. it can't be done. He receives. And somebody says, the reasonable apprehension, that I may be prevented from filing nomination. He will depute one assistant panchayat returning officer, the officer so and so having jurisdiction for receiving the nomination papers within the specified date and hour from the intending candidates. Yes. The proviso. As you read the proviso, it may also. Yes. So first he resorts to this. Then he's still a thousand people are waiting. May also by the said order extend the last date for for one day and also direct the nomination papers received in subsection one and two, so and so shall be taken up by the panchayat for scrutiny. Now that power he has not exercised. My lord was pleased to hear that forty six to empower him to yes. extend it. The court we, have, cannot... we have in the first order yes. we have said that. And the court's view was the court cannot do it, but you should do it. But here, admittedly, maybe 10%, assuming 10% or 5%, it does not, my lord, dehorse him the power if the percentage is low or high. If the power, this inherent power given to him to ensure the nomination is filed. The essence of these powers are to ensure that the nominations are allowed to file without any hindrance. And in what was seen in Chopra matter, the written order, the court directed you pass the reason order. The reason order is, I am concerned only with the office. And within the jurisdiction of 144, declared not beyond that. But this uh, is serious not on which I am trying to pursue your lordship. Now, kindly comes to me the presentation of nomination papers. Now, if not at 2.30 or 3, I am not prevented. The officer concerned who receives the nomination, being satisfied, receives the nomination. Though my Lord, he might come and say that I was forced to. Unless the people were, in, were inside the office to file the nomination, even beyond the time, what does it indicate? There are certain obstructions and you are forced to? What do you mean by that? And after having accepted the nomination, my Lord, the symbol allotment was done, scrutiny was done, no objection. Finally, the list is passed, uh, published on the website declaring that your nomination is accepted because it was accepted beyond scheduled time, beyond 3 p.m. Well, my humble attempt to persuade your lordship that the election commission my lord, cannot be just a my lord, typist. I do not use the word clerk. That whatever is there, I shall go on typing. You have to exercise your discretion being a constitutional authority. The constitution has empowered you, not the statute. Statute is just aiding your authority. Yes. And then, my lord, the, the question comes up, my lord, that you have, in many cases, accepted beyond three hours, beyond three p.m. You have accepted the nomination when the person is not in the country. <laughs> and that if a proper bullet inquiry is made, I am sure, I am bold enough to bullet, submit before this court. There are many such cases. In, bullet, the, in which constituency that uh, person filed it from Saudi in, Arabia? In Minakha. Bullet, that we have pleaded also in Minakha here. Yeah. South Chubbish Minaka. So we will we'll come back to this. Minaka. And not in that block without entire Panchayat without de declared uncontested. Therefore, a person without who could not have filed nomination is declared elected. Now then kindly come to me, I'm just taking a lawship to the statute, then I shall will try to develop my lord from the constitutional point of view. Then kindly come to me, lord, the 
scrutiny of nominations. Section. The section forty nine. Forty seven is also important. There are allegations to that extent also. Forty seven deposits. A candidate shall not be deemed to be declared nominated for election from a constituency unless he deposits or causes to be deposited in cash with Panchayat returning officer concerned. In the case of an election from a seat in a constituency of a Gram Panchayat, so and so amount. Therefore, Mula, this deposit is also one of the Mula, primary condition for acceptance of nomination. And that deposit should also be Mula, within the time frame by the Notification three. There are cases below. Even these were not done anyway. Those details should come later. Then scrutiny of nomination. On the date fixed for the scrutiny of nominations under section forty-eight, the candidates or their election agents and as such other persons as may be prescribed may attend at such time and place as the panchayat returning officer may appoint. At the panchayat returning officer shall give them all reasonable facilities for examining the nomination papers of all candidates which have been delivered within time and in the manner laid down in section 46. Therefore, when the scrutiny is made, then all <clears throat> the intending persons, may be there, may not be there, but the scrutiny means without the nomination paper, prima facie is okay. There's nothing to complain. Then kindly come to the page uh, per section 50 to the problem for me. Then not we'll continue sir. after two. Two thirty will come. Two thirty. That's good for me. Okay. My Lord, uh, earlier this morning. Not mentioning them.
My Lord, well, the matter I mentioned in the morning, Lord, she says that to bring the other side. Well, there. Well, I took and I said no steps. Immediately, I issued an email. Well, there was no interim order from the very first day of the rate petition. Well, Mr. Arifin, who is appearing in the matter, well, he's, he's, he's not in court. So I'm gathering in, in for this. I couldn't come in the morning. Well, I, Millard, a uh, letter has been issued, Millard, for Millard banning them. That letter has been issued. I have seen that letter. Mm. Basically, their prayer is for restraining an invocation of an unconditional bank guarantee. You hold on for a day. Tomorrow, we, we will list them. Very well. Very well. But only, only Millard, one request, Millard, let them not to proceed Millard, in terms of that letter. That yes, is verbal yes, yes. understanding, Millard. Yes, yes. They should absolutely. have undertaken. So tomorrow, I, in fact, Millard told them I have to return the brief. You please. No, no. no. Let them not precipitate. But and tomorrow, so far as my learned friend is concerned, this is only for debarment. It's not correct. Factually not correct. Millard, I also no, no, there's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a super banning impossibility. Millard, there's a, it's a, yes, tomorrow. Let them work, I give them two years extension. But I do not seek for Millard. There's a, yes. But tomorrow, it, One but, more, Millard. but sorry for the embarrassment, but may I say, Millard, tomorrow the first item, if you'll order. Yes, yes. First item. Deeply, I'm grateful. I'm extremely sorry for Millard, traveling yes. a lot. Millard, one more, Millard. This time, my mentioning, if you'll order, we are Millard. in a partnered matter. Millard. Contempt will add appeal not pending once we vacated the order because of the sale notice. Comply within 48 hours, will add. I have the order so yesterday. This is not a time hmm. to mention. So what have you done? You have filed an appeal. No, no, no. My appeal is pending. Item 26. It was yesterday, 48 what hours. What to do? We are still in item 6. I know that, will add. I, I also Please know. impress upon your learned senior friends. <laughs> My Lord. That takes... At two o'clock tomorrow or any other time. Let us let us see how we progress today. Very well. Millard, I'm deeply obliged. Millard. Wait. For My please, Lord. please call the list. My Lord, I deeply uh, no mentioning, madam. Please. Tomorrow morning we'll see. Yes, sir. Please continue. Appellate said continuing matter item number five and six. No, but I was uh, showing the provisions for presentation of nomination papers. Yes. Section 49. Section 46. 46. The, uh, on the before the date appointed under clause A of section 43, each candidate shall either in person or by his proposal between the hours as may be prescribed, <clears throat> deliver to the panchayat returning officer at the place specified in his behalf in notice issued under section 44, a nomination paper completed in the prescribed form and signed by the candidate and by a voter of the constituency as proposal. Provided that no nomination paper shall be delivered to the panchayat returning officer on a day which is a public holiday. Then two, this is important because this will ultimately lead to the question of election petition. Without prejudice to the generality of the provisions contained in subsection one, if the commission on receipt of complaints from the intending candidates or the recognized political parties, either from or through dissimilar, I skip over one. This is, uh, has been read a number of times. I'm skipping over. Then kindly come to three. That is what for the uh, scheduled cast backward classes. Then kindly come to subsection six. Yes. On the presentation of a nomination paper, the panchayat returning officer shall satisfy himself that the names and serial numbers in the electoral roll of the candidate and his proposal as entered in the nomination paper are the same as those entered in the electoral rolls, provided that no misnomer or inaccurate description or clerical, technical or printing error in regard to the name of the candidate or his proposal, or in regard to any place mentioned in the electoral roll or the nomination paper and no clerical, technical or printing error in regard to serial number in the electoral role of any such person or the nomination paper shall effect the full operation of the electoral role or the nomination paper with respect to such person or place in any case where the description in regard to the name of the persons or place in such as to be commonly understood and the panchayat returning officer shall permit any such misnomer or inaccurate description or clerical, technical or printing error to be corrected in order to bring them in conformity with the corresponding entries in the list of voters. 
and where necessary, direct that any such misnomer, inaccurate description, clerical, technical, or printing error in the electoral rule or in the nomination per shall be overlooked. Then kindly come to me, Lord. Section 47, I have placed. I do not want to waste my Lord's time. Then kindly come to 49, scrutiny of nominations. On the date fixed for the scrutiny of nominations under section 48, the candidates or their election agents and such other persons as may be prescribed may attend at such time and place. As the panchayat returning officer may appoint and the panchayat returning officer shall give them all reasonable facilities for examining the nomination papers of all candidates which have been delivered within time. But this is a very strong prescription which the benefit is being sought to be taken and in the manner laid down in section 46. Then we are examining the uh, nomination papers. Then kindly come to 49.2b. Yes that there has been a failure to comply with any of the provisions of section 45 or section 46 or 47. These are the provisions without in detail. I am not traveling my lot with that, but showing without what are the requirement for nomination papers and ultimately what would be the effect of election petition. But before that, I would invite my lot's kind of attention to section 40, 64. Yes. If at any election to a Gram Panchayat, Panchayat, Shamite, Jila Parishad, the number of contesting candidates, I am not troubling, number of sad not troubling, kindly come to see. This would indicate that the intention of the legislatures. The number of such candidates is less than the number of seats to be filled in a constituency. The Panchayat returning officer shall forthwith declare in the prescribed manner all such candidates to be duly elected and the commission shall by notification in the official gadget call upon the constituency to elect a person or persons to fill the remaining seat or six. Therefore, the intention is that you have to get all the seats elected in a proper manner. If there are less candidates, those can be declared uncontested, but less has to be filled up by a fresh poll. Therefore, the Holding of fresh poll for the purpose of ensuring Lord, the purity of election, if I may use that expression, Lord, is inherent within the statute. Now the question comes, Lord, kindly come to the election offense and the uh, no, trial of election petitions. Also, can you forget about this? Turn to section 79. Disputes to the election. If any dispute arises as to the validity of an election under this act, any person entitled to vote at such election may, within 30 days after the date of declaration of the results of such election, file a petition calling in question such election in one or more of the grounds specified in section one of section 93 and section 94. Now kindly turn to section 93. Grounds for declaring election to be void. Subject to the provisions of subsection 2, if the court is of opinion that on the date of his election, a return candidate was not qualified or was disqualified to be chosen, then <clears throat> that any corrupt practice, I am not troubling my lord, then C is very important. That any nomination has been improperly rejected. Lord, there is no ground to challenge when somebody is Lord, denied or prevented from filing nomination. I repeat that any nomination has been improperly rejected. And what are the improprieties not as described in the filing of scrutiny? If the requirements of scrutinizing the nomination paper was found to be not properly scrutinized, that leads to improper rejection. This is no question of any other ground. Improper acceptance. The result of the election D of the insofar as it concerns a returned candidate has been materially affected by the improper acceptance of any nomination 
or by any corrupt practice committed at the, in the interest of the return candidate by an agent or other than his election agent, or by the improper deception, refusal, rejection of any vote, or the deception of any vote which is void. Four, by non-compliance with provisions of this act or any of the rules made under this act, the court shall declare the election return candidate to void. Therefore, the issue which is troubling us but does not come within the prescribed description of improper rejection of nomination paper or improper acceptance of nomination paper. But this is the area which was not perceived by the legislatures. Therefore, this remains with that particularly outside the prescription of rules. But this comes within the alert, residuary power of the election commission, particularly when the purpose of the statute may have placed the relevant sections, I don't want to repeat it, is to ensure that an election is held. And for other purposes, disturb and other things, they can not postpone it. What is the Therefore, the holding of election is the prime duty of the election commissioner in free and fair manner. Now, before going to the uh, Supreme Court authorities on this, I would like to rely upon the judgment of this court. Right, page 72 of my petition, which is the first order it starts from page 52, but I <clears throat> rely upon a lot very important areas according to my own understanding. Item six. Huh? That page 70, paragraph 31. Running page 70. Yes. The paragraph 31, may I read it? Though the read court may not entertain an approach made to it if it amounts to calling in question the election. However, a window has been provided, as would be evident from the aforesaid discussion, to an agreed party to approach the read court if it is to facilitate the election. Yes. Then kindly come to paragraph 33. The issue as to whether there has been prevention of or obstruction to the intending candidates from making nominations at the specified place is a disputed question of fact which cannot be decided by of exchange of affidavits. Therefore, this court was not inclined to invite the parties to deal with such allegations by filing objections thereto. If there is any reasonable apprehension of prevention or obstruction to making of nominations, or there has been any alleged obstruction, the aggregate party has to take recourse to the provisions let down sub under subsection 2 of section 46 of the Act in a manner specifically provided therein. Now here, the complaints were lodged before the election commission when they were prevented. The election committee did not respond. Then kindly turn to Millard, paragraph 38. It is also well settled that a mandamus cannot be issued to compel a authority, statutory authority. But this is very important, the statutory authority. That the election commission, admittedly, there is constitutional authorities, though some of his functions are guided by the statute. statute. <clears throat> due to the provisions of the relevant statute. Therefore, the court cannot direct acceptance of nomination papers either by the commission or permit filing of nominations before the concerned district magistrate as paid for by the petitioners. It would be relevant at this stage to take notice, to, to, no, no, sorry, to take note of the proviso to section 46 of the 2003 Act, which empowers the commission 
to extend the last date for making nomination for one day under the contingencies mentioned in section 46.2. This court is of considered view that an agreed person takes reverse to, should be recourse, not recourse. reverse, takes recourse to section 46.2, the commission shall take a decision in accordance with law. This is the mandate of the distribution bench. But then the other the election observers, not I'm not troubling my lot with that. And then Lord she found that it is necessary to deploy. Can we come to paragraph 72? <laughs> The next aspect which has been focused by the interveners as to in, ensure protection of the lives and limbs of the polling officers and polling personnel in the ensuing election. It is stated that in the Panchayat election held in year 2018, on 14th of May 2018, one Rajkumar Rai, a teacher from Uttar Dinajpur, was assigned the duty as presiding officer. I'm not troubling that, Lord. This is well known. And one of the lead petition, Lord, moved on behalf of the family of Rajkumar is still pending. It's a very unfortunate thing. Therefore, there will be page 95, there will be a direction to the commission to ensure the safety and security lives of the polling person, polling officer in the event of any complaint, we got so and so. That was the basic concern of the court to ensure the protection. Then we also commission found to be without, not reactive. Forget about proactive nature. Still, whether after this court is not reactive, and my lord would again pass the order at page one one six. At page one two eight. Paragraph 13. After, as well, I got it. After we have elaborately heard the learned advocates for the parties and carefully considered the material space before the space by the State Election Commission. It is clear that the State Election Commission has not taken any proactive and diligent steps with a view to implement the directions issued by this court in the earlier read petition in its letter and spirit. We say so because in the minutes of the meeting dated 9th of June 23, convened by the commission with the Chief Secretary and the Director General of Police with regard to the identification of the sensitive areas from law and order point of view, it has been stated that the district magistrate and superintendent of police have initiated the process of identification of sensitive areas from law and order point of view. Though such was the decision as on 9th of June 23 till today, 15th of June, such identification has not been made. This is clear from the communication sent by the State Election Commission to the Chief Secretary, Government of West Bengal dated 14th of June, wherein it is stated that the Chief Secretary has been requested to submit assessment plan and deploy of forces for the ensuing Panchaya general election at the earliest, so as to enable the Commission to further necessary action in the matter. Thus, it is seen that more than five days, no action had been initiated and no assessment plan has been submitted to the Commission, submitted Commission, which clearly shows that there is a slackness on the part of the administration in promptly reporting by identification of sensitive areas from the law and order point of view. In fact, it is the submission made on behalf of the commission today that it may take a few more days for the identification of the sensitive areas. This in our view is not appreciable because of the fact today, 15 June is the last date for filing nomination. And the next will be a crucial event where the last date of withdrawal of nomination have been fixed. These are the concerns of this court. And Lord, instead of responding respectfully to the concern of this court, the matter was taken up to the Supreme Court. They have the right. I don't have any uh, common not. 
and this was ultimately disposed of by the honorable supreme court by not entertaining but these are the situations which will not the this court will not taking the ground realities in the consideration came to this finding well my point would be will not definitely this situation will not is was not in the contemplation of the statute makers they had given sufficient without indications to ensure that the polling must be there and should be free and fair excessive powers were given in some cases were declared the poll will not to be postponed and deferred now what are the powers of for fact powers of the election commission now before that yes this is important a lot to show after these orders now what had happened number of allegations page below were made before the authorities kindly turn to page 133 Mr. De, we had to approach the learned single judge having jurisdiction of panchayat matters. Kindly turn to page one thirty-four. This is order dated fourteenth of June, twenty twenty-three. Assess this. Mr. May kindly come from paragraph four at page one thirty-four. The petitioners complain. that on 13th of june when they went to file their nominations for the aforesaid election process they were prevented by certain persons from doing so only the petitioner number 4 was able to file her nomination state is represented by swanso land advocate general sorry by mr isil mukhil land advocate general it is submitted that since the petitioners have complained to the state election commission it is the commissioner who should take steps since the last date of filing nomination is tomorrow as a special case the bhangor police station and the kashipur police station are directed render all assistance issue directed to render all assistance to the petitioners to file their nominations for the aforesaid elections in course of today or by tomorrow the bhangor and kashipur police stations are added as party respondents leave is granted to the land advocate swanso as an ancillary relief in aid of the main Rest prayer. This court deems it necessary to direct the state election commission to exercise powers as vested on them under section forty six two of the West Bengal Panchayat Act, and direct all concerned police or stations to render necessary assistance to those candidates who are not able to file nominations upon receipt of complaints in this regard, or not before the last date of filing of nominations, that is tomorrow. The Lanier State Council will appear to make submission. therefore these are the will not the orders of the court on the strength of this will not they went to file nomination they got killed they come to the goons rakhte wala goons samay bade chale and then next kind it on to next order at pagination to mil mila page 138 another order on 15th of june प्लेसेस they shall report to the oc election sale at the sp office with another repetition the candidate shall assemble at boshirat police station and shall be escorted by the police to the place where they shall file their nominations four candidates who are present in court shall go to the hair street police station the hair street police station shall escort them notwithstanding their jurisdictional issues to the respective places where they shall file their nominations the police stations of the police districts though through which they shall cross shall render all necessary assistance to the officers of the hair street police station the list of candidates is mentioned in paragraph 7 of the writ petition the another writ petition the petitioner shall inform to the ocs of the police stations concerned as to where they shall assemble to enable the oc to arrange for their security and escort them to the respective places to file their nominations then another petition the petitioner shall inform well, these are the details learned judge will not was 137 e te chole jan Kind enough to direct me, Lord. Even the police escorts. Now, kindly see what happened. 
Evolution to come. E. Later. Right, right, right. Suggestion ke kudbe. Another order on 15.6. Second order. Suggestion ashe kudbe. 137 E. <clears throat> the matter has been mentioned by Swanso in the middle of the court proceedings in view of the extreme urgency cited by the council. Pursuant to this court's order passed today at 12.30 p.m., the petitioner had assembled near Shonpukur along with the police personnel. While they were proceeding to file their nomination, they were fired upon by some unknown persons. The police personnel thereafter stated to have abandoned the petitioners and one person had died in such firing. Mr. Samim seeks assistance from the police so that the remaining persons are evacuated from the said place and the police ensure appropriate medical treatment for them. Mr. Banerjee, counsel for the state who happened to be present in court in connection with another matter may take appropriate steps in the matter and ensure the security and safety of the persons. Mr. Banerjee later informed the court that they contacted the superintendent of police, concerned police district who wanted to know the whereabouts and contact numbers of the remaining persons. No, these are the situations. And these these are the you know, situation, and I have given the list of candidates at page 138. And then you know, page 142. This is in vernacular. I would request you to kindly communicate him. The bar from the vernacular, page 142. This is at 22 p.m. Uh, 2, 2 hours, 2 p.m., 11 minutes, 2.11 p.m. I am reading out loudly in Bengali, and if they say, I shall translate. This is addressed to the Binaka police station OC, Manonio Mahashoy. Yes, sir. আপনাকে সকলের অবগত করা হচ্ছে সকালে অবগত করা হয়েছে আদালতের নির্দেশ অনুসারে মিনাকা ব্লকের সমস্ত প্রার্থীরা যখন নমিনেশন জমা করার জন্য মিনাকা থানায় উপস্থিত হন তখন থানাতে মেইন গেটে তালা মেরে পুলিশ তাদের উপর বিভৎস লাঠি চার্জ করে Then, I am not naming any political party. I don't want to make it a political work field. I am on legal and constitutional issues. One person named Naim Choudhury, in his residence, they were kept confined. এই মুহূর্তে এখন তিনজন প্রার্থীকে কিডন্যাপ করা হয়েছে তাদের সাথে যোগাযোগ করা যাচ্ছে না দেয়ার নেমস আর গিভেন তাহমনি বিবি বাকিবুল্লাহ মোল্লা সেরিনা বিবি এন্ড দেন থ্রি ক্যান্ডিডেটস হ্যাভ বিন কেপ্ট ওয়েটিং ইন দিস পুলিশ স্টেশন দে আর नॉट बीइंग পারমিটেড টু ফাইল देयर নমিনেশন টু নেমস আর গিভেন দিস আর অল হ্যাপেনিংস মিলট अराउंड 2 পিএম এন্ড দি লাস্ট Terminal time to file nomination was 3 p.m. on the very same day. But these are the factual aspects. I don't think anybody will really challenge these facts. But what is to be done? Bunch of complaints. Oh, and what this is another very peculiar development. The villagers of Chopra, they have filed an affidavit showing that we are willing to participate in the board, but the candidate who have chosen to be nominated is prevented from filing nomination. So all written complaints and affidavits. And in all these areas are all uncontested. Yes,
Bakpuri Gita. The formula of getting uncost, uncontested elected has become a pleasure. He's always learned single judge Milad Nwala Dibata say that we cannot conceive of uncontested election in Panchayat elections. Nineteen seventy. How much is that? Yes. Yes. But I will rely upon without 1978 volume one Supreme Court cases, the constitutional main judgment in Mahindra Singh Gill. Page 405. 405. Judgment I cannot control my temptation to read the paragraph under the basics. Every significant, well, this paragraph two, well, I say that under the basics, I am tempted to not read this. Every significant case has an unwritten legend, an indelible lesson. This appeal is no exception. Whatever is formal result, the message as we will see at the end of the decision relates to the pervasive philosophy of democratic elections, which saw Winston Churchill vivified in matchless words. At the bottom of all tributes paid to democracy is a little man, walking into a little booth with a little pencil, making a little cross on a little bit of paper. No amount of rhetoric or voluminous discussions can possibly diminish the overwhelming importance of the point. That this is democracy, which means that our court also courts with respect. Now, kindly <clears throat> turn to paragraph 12. A free and fair election. Got it. A free and fair election based on universal adult franchise is the basic. That I, I, I have been harping from the opening words of mine, the free and fair election is the basic structure of our constitution being a democratic governance. The regulatory procedures vis-a-vis -vis the depositories of functions and the distribution of legislative executive and judicative roles in the total scheme directed towards the holding of free elections at the specifics part 15 of the constitution plus the representation of the people act and the representation of the people act 1951 rules framed there under instruction issued and exercises prescribed constitute the package of electoral law governing the parliamentary and assembly elections in the country the super authority is the election commission the kingpin is the returning officer. The minions are the presiding officers in the polling stations and electoral engineering is in conformity with the elaborate legislative provisions. 
The scheme is this. The President of India ignites the general election across the nation by calling upon the people, dividing into several constituencies and registered in the electoral rolls to choose their representatives to the Lok Sabha. Not <clears throat> pausing here for a moment, I repeat a lot the perspective of holding elections to Lok Sabha and assemblies are completely different than of the panchayats. Because the Amulet non honing of election within a time will create constitutional crisis. But in Panchayat, there is no question of any constitutional crisis. <clears throat> the scheme, uh, sorry, the constitutionality appointed authority, the election commission takes over the whole conduct and supervision of the mammoth enterprise involving a plethora of details and variety of activities and starts off with the notification of the timetable for the several stages of this election. The assembly line operations then begin and administrative machinery and technology to execute these enormous and diverse jobs is fabricated by the act, creating officers, powers and duties, delegation of functions and location of polling stations. The precise exercise following upon the calendar for the poll commencing from the presentation of nomination papers, polling drill and filling of votes, culminating in the declaration and report of the results are covered by specific prescriptions of the act and the rules. The secrecy of the ballot, the authenticity of the voting paper and the later identifiability with reference to particular polling stations have been thoughtfully provided for. My dear other matters necessary for smooth elections have been taken care of by several provisions of the act. It starts with that, the filing of nominations, but they did not even dream that there will be prevention at the threshold of filing nominations. This was beyond the imagination of anybody in the 1950s. Then I do not will not trouble my lot with this detailed discussion of and the language of the Krishna here. It's very difficult to read also. Then kindly come to paragraph 17. We now enter the constitutional zone relating to the controversy in this case. Although both sides have formulated the plural problems with some divergence, we may compress them into three cardinal questions. One, is Article 329B a blanket ban on all manner of questions which may have impact on the ultimate result of the election arising between two temporal termini? namely the notification by the president calling for the election and the declaration of the result by the returning officer. Is Article 226 also covered by this embargo? And if so, is Section 100 broad enough to accommodate every kind of objection, constitutional, legal, or factual, which may have the result of invalidation of an election and the declaration of the petitioner as the return candidate and direct the organization of any steps necessary to give full relief? The pausing here for a moment where I had placed that under the Panchayat Election Act, you cannot take care of all things, only improper filing or improper acceptance of nomination and corrupt practice. These issues were not really then also struck into the mind of the, the court. Can the election commission, clothed with the comprehensive functions under Article 324 of the Constitution, Cancel the whole poll of a constituency after it has been held, but before the formal declaration of the result has been made, and direct a fresh poll without reference to the guidelines under Section 58 and 64 of the Act or other legal prescriptions or legislative backing. If such plenary power exists, is it exercisable on the basis of inscrutable subjective satisfaction? or only on a reviewable objective assessment reached on the basis of circumstances vitiating a free and fair election and warranting the stoppage of declaration of the result and directions of a fresh poll, not merely of a particular polling station, but of the total constituency. Assuming a constitutionality vested capacity under Article 324 to direct repoll, is it exercisable only in conformity with the natural justice? and geared to the sole goal of a free popular verdict if frustrated on the first occasion? Or is the election commission immune to the observance of the doctrine of natural justice on account of any recognized exceptions to the application of the sage principle 
and unaccountable for his action even before the election court. Now, these are the issues raised by the court. Now, <clears throat> court went on deciding, then kindly come to paragraph 23. Democracy is government by the people. It is continual participative operation, not a cataclysmic periodic exercise. The little man in his multitude marking his vote at the poll does a social audit of his parliament uh, plus political choice of his proxy. Although the full flower of a participative government rarely blossoms, the minimum credential of a popular government is appealed to the people after every term of renewed of confidence. So we have adult franchise and general elections as constitutional and compulsion. The court, the right of election is the very essence of the constitution. It needs little argument to hold that the heart of the parliamentary system is free and fair elections periodically held based on adult franchise, although social and economic democracy may demand much more. Then the earlier judgments are considered. I am not traveling my lot with this. Then kindly come to 27, <clears throat> so that I am not accused of not placing this also. Thus far, everything is clear. No litigative enterprise in the high court or the other court should be allowed to hold up the ongoing electoral process. Because the parliamentary representative for the constitutional matters, sorry, the principle for the constitution's constituency should be chosen promptly. Article 329 therefore covers electoral matters. One interesting argument urged without success in Punaswami elicited a reasoning from the court, which has some bearing on the question in the present appeal. That argument was that if nomination was a part of election, a dispute as to the validity of the nomination was a dispute relating to election and could be called in question only after the whole election was over before the election tribunal. This meant that the returning officer could have no jurisdiction to decide the validity of a nomination, although section 36 of the act conferred on him this jurisdiction. The learned judge dismissed this argument as without merit, despite the great dialectical ingenuity in the submission. In this connection, the learned judge observed under section 36 of the Representative of the People Act 1951. It is the duty of the returning officer to scrutinize the nomination papers to ensure that they comply with the requirements of the Act and decide all objections which may be made to any nomination. It is clear that unless this duty is discharged properly, any number of candidates may stand for election without complying with the provisions of the Act and a great deal of confusion may ensue. In discharging the statutory duty imposed on him, the returning officer does not call in question any election. Scrutiny of nomination papers is only a stage, though an important stage in the election process. It is one of the essential duties to be performed before the election can be completed. And anything done towards the completion of the election proceeding can, by no stage of reasoning, be described as a questioning the election. The fallacy of the argument lies in treating a single step taken in furtherance of an election as equivalent to election. The decision of this appeal, however, turns not on the construction of the single word election, but on the construction of the compendious expression, no election shall be called in question in this context and setting with due regard to the scheme of part 15 of the constitution and the representation of the people act. Evidently, the argument has no bearing on this method of approach to us to the question posed in this appeal which appears to me to be the only correct method. Well, in this smackdown without the court held. Kindly come to that paragraph 48. Once we understand this soul and rule as a fair play in action, and it is so, we must hold that it extends to both the fields. 
After all, administrative power in a democratic setup is not allergic to fairness in action. And discretionary executive justice cannot degenerate into unilateral injustice. Nor is there a ground to be frightened of delay, inconvenience, and expense. If natural justice gains access, for fairness itself is a flexible, pragmatic, and relative concept, not a rigid, ritualistic, or sophisticated abstraction. It is not a bull in the china shop, nor a bill in one's bonnet. Its essence is good conscience in a given situation, nothing more but nothing less. The exceptions to the rules of natural justice are a misnomer or rather are but a shortened from the expressing the idea that in those exclusionary cases, nothing unfair can be inferred by not affording an opportunity to present or meet a case. Textbook excerpts and ratios from rulings can be hipped, but they all converge to the same point that audi alter impartium is the jurist justice of the law without, of course, making law lifeless, absurd, stultifying, self-defeating, or plainly contrary to the common sense of the situation. Now, with all these discussions, I will just take your lordship below to paragraph 114. Let, let, let me place from 111. With regard to this was Swami. Swami. Now that this is another learned judge, as my learned advocate general correctly points out, this is Mr. Goswami. It's important also. With regard to the construction of Article 329B, it was held that the more reasonable view seems to be that Article 229 covers the electoral matters. This court put forth its conclusion in the decision as follows. Having regard to the important functions which the legislatures have to perform in democratic countries, it has always been recognized to be a matter of first importance that elections should be concluded as early as possible according to time schedule, and all controversial matters and all disputes arising out of the election should be postponed till after the elections are over, so that the election proceedings may not be unduly retarded or protracted. In conformity with this principle, the scheme of the election law in this country, as well as in England, is that no significance should be attached to anything which does not affect the election. And if any irregularities are committed while it is in progress and they belong to the category or class which under the law by which elections are governed would have the effect of vitiating the election and enable the person affected to call it in question, they should be brought up before a special tribunal by means of an election petition and not to be made the subject matter of a dispute before any court while the election is in progress. The court also explained the connotation of the word election in very wide terms as follows. It seems to me that the word election has been used in part 15 of the constitution in the wide sense. That is to say, to connote the entire procedure to be gone through to return a candidate to the legislature. The use of the expression conduct of election article 324 specifically points to the wide meaning and the meaning can also be read consistently into the other provisions which cover in part 15, including 329b. The court further observed, it is clear that the election can be and has been appropriately used with reference to the entire process, which consists of several stages and embraces many steps, some of which may have an important bearing on the result of the process. Now, pausing here for a moment. Here is my mere submission. Therefore, the free and fair being the foundation now, that must govern below the entire election process from the date of filing, from the date of notification till the declaration of results. At no stage, if the free and fair situation is vitiated without then the election stands vitiated. And that was the concern of this court also. And that's why the court will have deliberately directed that you take records to forces by which you can ensure peaceful election. Now, but this judgment I cited only to show this that 329B cannot be said to be a complete ban, but it is a protective guard to ensure free and fair election. And if this free and fair election cannot be conducted, then the election commission will not, unfortunately, I must say, fails to discharge its duty and afford the basic democratic requirement. 
then my lord i would lie upon 2002 volume 5 supreme court cases the plenary power of election commission 2005 ssc 2002 ssc page 294 but this was in the background about the declaration to be given by the candidates about the criminal antecedents and other things now that i state way invite your lordship to paragraph 46 where the court will sum up the entire thing to sum up the page uh, at page 320 to sum up the legal and constitutional position which emerges from the aforesaid discussion it can be stated that one the jurisdiction of the election commission is wide enough to include all powers necessary for smooth conduct of elections and the word elections is used in a wide sense to include the entire process of election which consist of several stages and embraces many steps the limitation on a plenary character of power is when parliament or state legislature has made a valid law relating to or in connection with elections the commission is required to act in conformity with said provisions in case where the law is silent article 324 is reserved of power to act for the avowed purpose of having free and fair election that which i have been trying to impress upon the lordship from the from the very beginning the constitution has taken care of leaving scope for exercise of residuary power by the commission in his own right as a creature of the constitution in the infinite variety of situations that may emerge from time to time in a large democracy as every contingency could not be foreseen or anticipated by the enacted laws or the rules by issuing necessary directions the commission can fill up the vacuum till there is legislation on the subject <laughs> in kanai alal omar case the court construed the expression superintendence direction and control in article 3241 held that a direction may mean an order issued to a particular individual or a percept which may have to follow and may be a specific or general order and such phrase should be construed liberally empowering the election commission to issue such orders there was the argument that the election law covers everything and therefore i have no power milord is no argument on the part of an constitutional authority it is this power is derived from constitution state legislation only to me lord give some guidance how to do it nothing more than that the word election includes the entire process of election which consists of several stages and it embraces many steps some of which may have an important bearing on the process of choosing a candidate fair election contemplates disclosure by the candidate for his past uh, in for of his past including assets held by him so as to give a proper choice to the candidate according to is thinking and opinion as stated earlier the common cause case the court dealt with the contention that elections in the country are fought with the help of money power which is gathered from black sources and once elected to power it becomes easy to collect tons of black money which is very common nowadays in our state 
which is used for retaining power and for re-election. If on an affidavit, a candidate is required to disclose the assets held by him at the time of election, the voter can decide whether he could be elected even in case where he has collected tons of money. Therefore, Mullah, the court says in conclusion, I Mullah, do not read the other things to save time, that you have immense power. Ensure election, free and fair. You have to exercise your power. You cannot simply be an onlooker, like saying that the DM has said 144 zone, we have done so, therefore my duty is over. <laughs> this is not available to an election <clears throat> commissioner. Now that I will refer a lot, a special reference, presidential reference made on the Nana Dirat. Now this is 2002 volume 8 SCC, <coughs> page 237. Two But kindly turn to paragraph 77. This was a reference to the Honorable Supreme Court. Page seven, paragraph 76. It is in the light of the aforesaid discussion, Article 324 was enacted, and the superintendent's direction and control and conduct of election was no more left in the hands of the executive, but was entrusted to an autonomous constitutional authority, i.e. the election commission. It appears that since the entire matter relating to the elections was entrusted to the election commission, it was found to be a matter of no consequence to provide any period of limitation for holding fresh election for constituting a new legislative assembly in the event of premature dissolution. This was a deliberate and conscious decision. However, care was taken not to leave the entire matter in the hands of the election commission. And therefore under article 327, read with entry 72 of list one of the seventh schedule of the constitution, parliament was given power subject to the provisions of the constitution to make provisions with respect to matters relating to or in connection with the election of either House of Parliament or State Legislature, as the case may be, including preparation of electoral roll. For the states also under Article 328, read with entry 37 of these two, the legislature was empowered to make provisions subject to the provisions of the Constitution with respect to matters relating to or in connection with the election of either House of Parliament or State Legislature, including preparation of electoral roll. Thus, Parliament was empowered to make law as regards matters relating to conduct of election of either Parliament or state legislatures without affecting, well, kindly underline, without affecting the plenary powers of the election commission. The plenary powers of the election commission is always a constitutional power, which is much superior to the law made either by the Parliament or by the state legislature. In this view of the matter, the general power of superintendence, direction, control, and conduct of election, although vested in the election commission under Article 324.1, yet it is subject to any law either made by parliament or state legislature, as the case may be, which is also subject to the provisions of the constitution. The word election has been interpreted to include all the steps necessary for holding election. In Mahinda Singh Gill, it has been consistently held that Article 324 operates in the area left unoccupied by legislation and the words superintendents control direction as well as conduct of all elections are the broadest of the terms. Therefore, it is no more in doubt that the power of superintendents direction and control are subject to law made by either parliament or by the state legislature as the case may be, provided the same does not encroach upon the plenary powers of the election commission under article 324. 
what is the purpose of plenary power? The basic structure of the constitution speaks of democracy. And democracy depends on free and fair poll. That's your plenary power. You have to exercise this. In my case, I've given so many instances how it has happened. There are different proceedings pending <clears throat> before the single judge also. Uh, in one matter, a single judge appointed CBI to cause inspection about on the tampering of ballot papers. The division which I was pleased to appoint a, a request and on sitting uh, retired judge of this court to inquire to see the, the gravity of it. And in the matter when my person lot was uh, in Hajj pilgrimage, the court sought for a report from the election commission. How could it be done? Prevention and judgment, right? And nomination prevention. And without the last, and I conclude without the one of the judgment of the Supreme Court, very short judgment. This is 2000, this is 1996, volume three Supreme Court cases. There are specific case of prevention was. Joshua, can you do that? Hello. One. Now that uh, I am not reading paragraph one, two, three, but I'm reading the paragraph four to save the precious time of the court. Though it is denied that the appellant had submitted a nomination papers for contest as Sarpanch, it would be difficult to believe the statement of the respondent that she had not filed the nomination papers. She had taken all necessary steps to file the nomination papers well within time. She had already been sitting Sarpanch over 15 years, under those circumstances, one would legitimately expect that she had an intention to contest the election, that an intention to contest the election. And having secured necessary papers in normal course, she would have filed the nomination papers, but for some supervening event. It is our case that the seventh respondent had forcibly taken the nomination papers from her and torn them off. And since her husband was already under police custody at the relevant time, she was incapable of resisting the high-handed action. It is obvious that she was prevented from filing the nomination papers. Under those circumstances, she was constrained to approach the authorities. But when she did not get any tangible result, she had gone to the High Court and filed a petition making all the allegations therein. Under these circumstances, we are of the considered view that the conduct of election in the circumstances was not valid in law. Though the learned counsel for the appellant seeks to rely on the rule 14A of the Punjab Gampanchat rules, we do not think that the facts of the case fall in any of the grounds enumerated in that rule. She cannot file an election petition equally. However, in view of the facts stated above, it being a case of unlawful prevention of the appellant from contesting the election, the election to the office of Sarpanch is clearly in violation of the law. Therefore, the election of the seven respondent as Sarpanch is set aside. However, he can continue till the repoll is held. Now, with the, with the change of situation, Miller, the constitutional courts have always been taken the dynamic approach because constitution is a dynamic document. It's not a stale one. With the change of time to ensure the flourishment of the democracy and democratic rights, you know, the constitution has to be interpreted like that. With this plot, I, I'm not in this background, Lord. I would appeal to your lordship, Lord, uh, if necessary, call for investigation or Lord, direct Lord, all these persons whose names are there to permit them to contest the election. Well, the only decision with respect, well, which draws on the facts of a particular case, 
my lord, to suggest that my lord, there was a finding of court, or my lord, at least the court came to a positive, my lord, uh, drew a positive inference that my lord, the particular person was prevented from filing nomination is my lord the last decision cited by my learned friend. Now, may I take my lord, all the other my lord cases uh, are my lord general propositions with which one can have my lord, but it cannot be a sole course of argument at all. Now, my lord, so far as this is concerned, my lord, I was wondering, my lord, as to what is my lord really. Well, uh, the source of my lord knowledge well, uh, that has been uh, provided in any of these petitions to suggest that any particular person has been prevented. Now, my lord, in this regard, what did your lordships had my lord been pleased to my lord interfere, pleased to in fact my lord rebuke the election commission my lord, for what your lordships felt was slackness on its part? My lord, the situation has been very substantially remedied. Your lordships had directed that my lord in one case, my lord, the date should be extended by my lord one day which is within the powers of the my lord commission under section 462 that was done in other cases my lord where my lord candidates approached my lord the court on the day following my lord that is the date for filing nominations was over on the 15th 15. on the 16th my lord certain candidates approached court saying that they were prevented on the 15th from my lord filing their nominations the court intervened my lord in the presence of the election commission extended the time my lord as could be extended under section 462 and my lord, they were my lord, allowed on the basis of communication of the order through my lord, the media link my lord, to immediately go and cast their my lord, file their nominations. Now, my lord, so far as these persons are concerned, first of all, my lord, in 306, my lord, here, my lord, there is a single petitioner. My lord, Ujjal Trivedi is the petitioner in 306. Now, my lord, so far as he is concerned, my lord, this petition is my lord, filed today. Mm. Now, my lord, I am wondering. That my lord, what prevented the petitioner, like in the other cases, from my lord approaching this honorable court and making a contemporaneous complaint that look, I have been prevented, and so therefore allow me to file nominations. My lord, persons who were genuinely my lord interested in filing nominations and not merely making a circus of this whole exercise, my lord have approached court immediately. And my lord, as we have come to learn by now, my lord, in these matters, you come to the court panting. You don't wait. Now, my lord, kindly my lord see. Well, as to what are the my lord, facts that have been my lord, referred to or brought on record in the petition, which would suggest to this honorable court that my lord, in fact, persons have been prevented from filing nominations. Well, lord, lordship has been pleased to my lord, observe that so far as Chopra my lord, police station is concerned, which was drawn to your lordship's attention, my lord, there was violence, my lord, not within my lord, the radius of my lord, the nomination filing my lord, uh, block, but my lord, SD or BDO office, but my lord, outside. Now, my lord, today, these may be, my lord, whole connected violences. My lord, to the extent possible, my lord, there have been flag marches, there have been, my lord, deployment of forces, everything has been done. My lord, today, if a person felt that, yes, my lord, I have been prevented, my lord, he has come to the election commission, my lord, let us, my lord, be, my lord, shown an instance where the election commission has not acted. My lord, today, if any specific instance was drawn to your lordship notice, well, I would have asked the election commission to come and file a report, stating that exactly let the court be apprised as to what steps you have taken. But well, that is not what has happened here. Well, may I just show your lordship well, the petitions well, one by one, if your lordships will kindly take up 306 first. Yes. Well, I will well, find well, that here, well, this is what it's, it says well, in paragraph 8. Petitioner has gone through the website of the State Election Commission and after going into the website, no feasible information was found from the said website in respect of information about day-to-day -day nomination filed by aspiring candidates. On the other hand, when the petitioner in his usual course gets news relating to election process and its day-to-day -day nominations and other activities in relation to Panchayat Election 2023. It appears that between 9th to, uh, to 13th June, total nominations received by the WBACC in 9328 from a particular political party, and on 14th and 15th, the nomination papers received by WBACC are 84107 by 4 p.m. from the candidates belonging to the said political party. When the news media publishes this news day by day, saying that the said news and information was published in their concerned newspaper in the manner as stated, Election Commission said. My Lord, I have not been able to make my Lord, much sense of the paragraph itself, but my Lord, be that as it may, my Lord, it appears that my Lord, the concern expressed is my Lord, between my Lord, the initial my Lord, few days of filing nominations, my Lord, lesser number of nominations filed, 
then my lord last two days my lord there were large numbers it's not unusual but my lord how can this my lord be a cause of action for approaching your lordship with prayers as serious as have been made my lord in the petition so my lord here my lord it is entirely on my lord media reports that my lord the petition has been maintained and my lord kindly see now my lord the cause of action i'm trying to find the cause of action my lord for filing the petition paragraph 10 silence of election commission in respect of publishing the data and information relating to ensuing election may arise may raise it should be question of credibility impartiality efficiency my lord entire petition is based on conjectures entire petition is based on conjectures based on media reports and then my lord what is my lord the duty of the election commission my lord we have my lord an education on that Yes. Now, my lord, kindly let us, my lord, now see further. Paragraph 20. According to the data released by the State Election Commission, there are 61636 polling booths in Panchayat areas for 63229 Brahm Panchayat seats, 9730 Panchayat Shomiti seats, 928 Zilla Parishad seats. The number of voters in the state is 56.7 million. Respond number four states that for the three tier West Bengal Panchayat election 2023, Ruling party has submitted 84107 nominations, which outnumbers the total seats in West Bengal Panchayat election 2023, though the fact remains that at the stage of securitization, each of the candidates will get only one seat. Petitioner states that such outnumbered submissions of nominations for West Bengal Panchayat election within such short span of time does give rise to suspicious suspicions regarding the transparency, practicity, and veracity followed in commencement of election process being held by the storm before. Malad, I, I am Malad, wondering, Malad, what does the election commission really have to do about this? People have come forward, filed nominations. Malad, nominations will be scrutinized. If they are Malad, according to the form, they will be accepted. If not, they will be rejected. And the Malad, there is a process of a withdrawal of nomination also. And I am just looking for the cause of action. Well, they say that large number of nominations filed within a short period of time. That is the entire cause of action. Well, that is well, the cause of action in well, this petition. And then if your lordship will kindly see whether well, the rest of it is well, lecture on the duties of the election commission. Well, kindly see well, the prayers at page 25. Well, this is to declare the West Bengal Panchayat elections 2023 void because of non-compliance of basic principles of constitution and the statute to ensure free and fair West Bengal Panchayat election. This is, my lord, the primary relief. And then, my lord, paragraph prayer D. My lord, I don't know, my lord, this is the nature of fishing inquiry. Everything is, my lord, there. It's a public portal. A writ offer in the nature of mandamus directing respondents, more particularly respondents 4 and 5, to publish updated information relating to the entire election process, including day-to-day -day and time-to-time -time filing of nomination, withdrawal, scrutinization, poll, and accounting of West Bengal Panchayat election 2023 in their website and release same for maintaining transparent, free, fair election process. Now, my lord, nothing has been shown to your lordship my lord, from the election Panchayat Election Act or the rules to suggest as to what is the mode or manner of declarations to be made, what is the periodic necessity of making declarations, and how much well, this making of declarations has been violated. I have not heard, my lord, one sentence uttered in this regard. Now, my lord, therefore, my lord, this, my lord, really is, my lord, a petition, my lord, which has no cause of action. And, my lord, the relief spread are, my lord, really to, my lord, ultimately undo, my lord, the entire election process. That seems to be the purpose. Now, well, let us look at the next petition. Your lordships have been shown the sections. Your lordships have been shown what the powers of the election commission, my lord, are. Well, this, my lord, we did not need to be educated about because your lordships have already, my lord, commented on this very exhaustively in the earlier order, which has received the affirmation of the Honorable Supreme Court. But, my lord, the entire argument today was these are the sections, these are the powers of the election commission. This is how my lord, the Supreme Court has noticed as to what my lord, the duties of the election commission are. This is your lordship's order, of which my lord, we are very well aware of. 
as to how your lordships have directed my lord and then my lord rebuked the election commission and directed deployment of forces to ensure free and fair elections in the state and it is on a conjecture that the elections will not be free and fair that this petition has been filed. The next petition, which is 307, which comes with a petition and then a supplementary affidavit served in court. Now, this is filed, if your lordship sees, by an association called Save Democracy. And then there are other six other petitioners as well. Now let kindly see paragraph five. Well, here, my Lord, may I just my Lord, read this? Well, Lord, Mr. Rajiv Sinha was appointed election commissioner of the West Bengal State Election Commission. Immediately on the next day, without consultation with stakeholders, Mr. Sinha, in a press conference dated such and such, announced the elections to the panchayat would be held on 8th July. Nominations would start from 9th, end on 15th. Now, well, this very subject matter was before your lordship in the first petition that was filed. And well, one of the comments was, how could he have been uh, uh, appointed to office and immediately have the call the elections? Well, this is done in consultation with the state. That your lordships have seen from under section 41, section 41, section 42. And my lord, your lordship has also seen that my lord, the process, the readiness of the state election commission, which is not only the my lord, election commissioner, is something that has to be made ready over a period of time. And my lord, the elections have to be held within the 25th of August. And my lord, there is a preparatory period, as your lordship was told, my lord, for which my lord, the candidates will have to be prepared to take office. Now, my Lord, all these things are argued before your Lordship. This is, my Lord, there's no, therefore, purpose in repeating the same, my Lord, allegations, putting the same wine in a new bottle and, my Lord, argue, asking for, my Lord, much wider and, my Lord, reliefs which are ultimately aimed at undoing the election process itself. And then they say there's a history of violence, my Lord, in the state, so far as conduct of elections is concerned. Then, my Lord, the next, my Lord, paragraph is, my Lord, lack of preparation. Again, my lord, addressed before your lordships in the first read petition. Paragraph 6. Lack of preparation was evident from the fact that candidates in Bakuras, Ranibad, Khatra, Chonamukhi, Taldangra, Mejira, Barjora, Simlipal, and candidates in Baripu, such and such, such and such, my lord, could not file their nominations on the first day. Now, my lord, have they filed their nominations or not? It is not the allegation that they have not been able to file nominations. So, my lord, this is again, my lord, something. That is, my Lord, completely out of the blue. My Lord, we don't know whether they wanted to file nominations on the first day. My Lord, they have all apparently filed nominations. That is at least the tenor of the paragraph. Then, my Lord, again, reliance on newspaper reports. My Lord, which are, my Lord, best, my Lord, avoided in these circumstances. Then, my Lord, this is, my Lord, the, my Lord, the reference to, my Lord, the incident that happened, my Lord, one gentleman was shot dead. My Lord, all these matters, my Lord, have been taken into account and, my Lord, these have been addressed. Each of, my Lord, these matters investigated, reports filed. My Lord, I have, my Lord, received some, my Lord, comment on this. My Lord, I have, my Lord, tried to, my Lord, reach out to the Election Commission and, my Lord, obtain some, my Lord, response. So far as well, kindly see here, well, this is what it says. Petitioners state that on 9 June 2023, one activist, Indian National Congress, namely Fulchand Sheikh, was shot dead in Khargram, Murshidabad. It would appear from newspaper reports that the said Fulchand Sheikh was supposed to be a contesting candidate in the elections. Later on, in June 10, that is the very next day. Two All India Trinamool Congress, being the ruling political party in the state, workers were arrested on charges of merger. Thus, Panchayat elections began with a murder. But man, they were arrested. Immediately, steps were taken. On the very next day, they were arrested. Then, my lord, on 9th June, several public interest litigations were filed. My lord, here, my lord, if your lordship sees, my lord, the first, my lord, my lord, uh, concern was state election commission shall requisition central forces. Commission should not entrust duty of enforcement of law and order to civic volunteers. 
installation of CCTV. Commission considers extending the date for completion. Well, all these issues again addressed by Lord Chiefs, each of these issues. Then, my Lord, next, my Lord, set of dates, paragraph 9. Petitioners state that between 9th June 2023 and 13th June 2023, acts of political violence connected to Panchayat election 2023 took place in several parts of the state. Petitioners number one to three by their members who resides in the different parts of the state made a joint survey of the incidents that took place. So, my Lord, who makes the joint survey? Petitioners number one to three. On 10th June 2023, a TMC leader was arrested after a pistol was found in his possession over the murder of Kulchan Sheikh. So when the steps are being taken immediately, TV news reports would suggest that police while arresting, well, now kindly see what, what kind of hearsay evidence we have with, well, in this petition. TV news reports would suggest that the police while arresting the accused was heard saying as to why the leader did not ex escape while he was carrying a gun. So my Lord, hearsay as reported in newspapers. Then Malad will kindly see Malad, the next allegation. 10 June, workers of ruling political party in Bhango assaulted government official for disturbing nomination, distributing nominations, forms to ISF candidates being an opposition party in the state. Such conduct indicates, amongst other things, the intention of the ruling party to either co-opt the state administration or beat them into submission. Malad, I have not been able to understand this Malad, meaning at all. Well, apparently, well, they have all been allowed to file nominations. Then candidates of Bharatiya Janata Party were prevented from filing nomination at Lakhpur, Naru areas on 10th June. They have thereafter well, filed their nominations. 13th June 2023, CPM candidates at Barsul and Purva Bardhaman district were stopped by ruling members from filing nominations. Well, as there is no allegation that they were refused to prevent it from filing nominations thereafter. In Minakhan, well, TMC workers... There from proceeding further to submit their nominations forms on 13 June 2023. Goons of the ruling party entered the CPM office and brutally beat up their members since they had gathered to file nominations. Copies of news reports in support of the incident at Minakhan is annexed here to and marked as such and such. Malad, so far as this is concerned, Malad, I do not know Malad, whether Malad, the steps have been taken, but apparently Malad, steps have already been taken. Malad, there is no allegation that Malad, persons were since prevented from filing nominations. Now, Malad, the thrust of the submissions here was that people have been prevented from filing nominations. But my Lord, I have not filed any positive statement so because of this incident, this person was prevented from filing his nomination paper. Till now, my Lord, in both the writ petitions, I have not filed, found. Then heavy bombing in areas at Bangor over filing of nominations on June 13. In Canning, SDPO was injured between clash of members, ruling party, police present there did not interfere. Honorable Governor visited the areas affected by violence. Well, I am Malad, still looking Malad, where Malad, a person, particular person was Malad, prevented from filing nomination. Then Malad, your Lordship will see Malad, section 46.2 at paragraph 12. Petitioners state that since the West Bengal State Election Commission has lost its independence and started acting at the dictate of the ruling party and state administration, it has failed to discharge its duty in terms of section 46.2 of the Act of 2003. My Lord, despite there having been directions of the Honorable Supreme Court, High Court, my Lord, the orders of the Honorable High Court my Lord, have, my Lord, I dare say, my Lord, have been complied with. In as, in as much as despite several complaints lodged before the Commission, the last date for submission of nominations was not extended, only to benefit the ruling party, on whose behalf, my Lord, 76,000 nominations were filed during the last two days, although the commensurate gathering of candidates of the ruling political party in front of government offices were noticed during the last two days, my Lord, this is completely, my Lord, unsubstantiated with any data. And my Lord, here, I remember, my Lord, Mr. Mitro, my Lord, submitting for your Lordships at the first instance on instructions of the State Election Commission that if you have assembled before three o'clock, you will be allowed to file nominations. I remember that was the submission I made, my Lord, on instructions, my Lord, before the learned single judge who was entertaining, my Lord, the writ petition on behalf of four persons who said that they had not been allowed to file their nominations on 15th. Mm -hmm. Whereby, my lord, the learned single judge extended the time, my lord, for filing nominations on 16th. They were allowed to file nominations. Now, my lord, here, my lord, if a person has been prevented, and my lord, the powers your lordship has examined, 
your lordships have malad gone into this matter malad very critically your lordship has malad tried to malad ultimately read the sections of the act harmoniously malad and after doing that your lordship said yes the power is to extend by one day and malad in deserving cases your lordship malad extended for one day well in a particular malad for a particular malad group and malad thereafter when the court thought or deemed it necessary court said extend it for these persons and malad the election commission did not stand in the way there now malad here i have malad not found malad any malad particular instance of malad a party malad who has not been allowed to file nomination in fact malad i heard malad uh, my learned friend mr bhattacharya say that malad these are persons who have not been prevented malad as per list but malad how they have prevented when they have prevented who have actually been prevented and why malad they should be now malad even breaching the code malad be allowed to file their nominations thereby disrupting the entire election process malad that is not a case that is made out now malad here malad there have been certain malad instances given but malad i did not find my learned friend malad really speaking of this malad in the course of his malad address to your lordships malad these are at paragraph 14 Now, Malad, kindly see what is the information. Now, Malad, the candidates do not come to this court. Interested candidates did come to court, took the Malad assistance of this court, filed their nominations. Paragraph fourteen: Petitioners state that they have gathered information from different areas that electors and the contesting candidates had gathered courage after the enforced orders of the Honourable Court, though those people did not have faith on police administration. However, the orders of the honorable court they were expecting that the police might help them in terms of direction of the honorable court accordingly police help was sought for by several intending candidates for instances few instances where intending candidates sought police help however due to violence could not submit their nominations in the absence of police help now malad here malad a few instances have been malad given now malad i am instructed and malad we will be prepared to file a report with your lordship saying that each of these instances have been examined wherever there has been a formal complaint made to the election commissioner my lord here of course my lord it says police has my lord refused to help but wherever my lord the election commission has been approached with a complaint my lord immediate steps i am instructed have been taken to redress the complaints to look into the complaints and to redress them now my lord kindly see just for example what is the nature of allegation Malad, page seventeen, Malad, paragraph A. On fifteenth June two thousand twenty-three, in terms of order of the court, candidates of the opposition party intimated the names of the prospective candidates to the Minakhan police station by an email dated such and such. Thereafter, candidates gathered at the Minakhan police station at ten a.m. Police largely charged them and restrained them by locking the main gate. Phones were snatched from them. Thereafter, goons of the ruling political party kidnapped the candidates from the police station and restrained them at the house of Naim Chowdhury and other places. illegal actions were informed by email dated june 15 2023 at about 11:46 am even after the said complaint no steps were taken in fact even after two candidates were detained at the police station and one candidate was restrained near the bd office and the rest were restrained at different places due to the forced acts of violence many people could not submit their nomination forms kindly see due to the forced acts of violence many people could not submit their nomination forms as vague as and general as it gets Then, Malad, after the incident was mentioned before the Honorable High Court, indicating violation of the order dated such and such, when order dated fifteen June, your Lordship, Malad, passed an order, Malad, making certain directions. Malad, wherever Malad, the authorities have been approached, Malad, they have taken steps. I, Malad, am yet to find out Malad single instance where Malad a particular Malad complaint has made to the SEC, and the SEC has, according to Malad, the petitioner, not reacted to the complaint. Malad, kindly see the general nature of these allegations. Malad, there has been violence. Police has not acted. Ruling political party has not taken steps. Now, Malad, kindly see, Malad, another thing, Malad. On June fifteen, candidates reached Haroa Haroa video office, filed their nominations. They found that the video office at Haroa was surrounded by goons. On trying to enter the office to submit their nomination forms, police personnel lathi charge on the candidates allowed about twenty persons to be kidnapped by the goons. Rest of the persons who were still present in the office had their nomination papers stolen and snatched away. Complaint was made on 15 June at 1:50 p.m. However, no action was taken to ensure that the candidates could submit their nomination. Petitioners have prepared a list of such persons that the same are annexed here to and marked annexed 
copy of complaints made over emails is an excellent well, now then well, let's kindly see on 15 june about 10 candidates reached the office of the block development officer at jagat vallapur they were prevented from entering the video office by goons of the ruling party having no other alternative those candidates emailed the nomination forms well, let's kindly now see email their nomination forms to the well, let's election commission Malad, your lordships were addressed Malad, around whether Malad, nominations could be found Malad, electronically or digitally. Now, Malad, this is my lord. What is the incident? Malad, they are now trying to Malad, file nominations electronically by filing it Malad, with the election commission. Malad, how can the election commission Malad, now Malad, respond to that and Malad, act by accepting the nominations? Then Malad, this goes on. Malad, the same complaints this goes on. Malad, FIR file. Then Malad, opposition party candidate in Chopra had been making representation to the police. However, the local police did not pay much heed to the request. One of the prospective candidates shot dead. Your Lordship has seen that arrests have been made immediately. Millard, uh, kindly have a look at. My Lord, will kindly give me a moment. An extra eighteen. Well, it's supposed to be the complaints. That's at page 147. If you're logical, for example, my lord, here, my lord, the petitioners have prepared a list of, I'll, I'll just read my little paragraph 18b once, my little, before I take your lordship to the page. Paragraph 18b, no action taken to ensure candidates could submit their nomination forms. Petitioners have prepared a list of such persons and the same are annexed here to and marked annexure P18. Copies of complaints made over email is annexed as P19. Now my little P18, your lordship will find that there's a list. My Malad instruction is Malad in respect of these lists, Malad, whatever complaints are now Malad annexed. Malad, whatever complaints were Malad officially Malad made available and Malad are annexed, Malad have been Malad addressed. Malad, we can file a report if your Lordship directs. Now Malad, kindly see Malad from Indian Secular Front official, such and such is a forwarded message. And Malad, this is at SP Boshidhat office, such and such. Well, most of these complaints are not even made to the election commission. And my lord, we have the complaints, my lord, in respect of the candidates, which are, my lord, apparently 38 in number, that is an extra 18. My lord, we have complaints which span two pages, pages 149 and 150. I shall not lead out the Bengali text because that has been, my lord, reproduced in the petition. But my lord, this is, my lord, the allegation. And now your lordship will kindly see, my lord, again, the prayers in this petition. My lord, issue a writ of in the nature of mandamus directing independent agency to investigate into affairs of filing of nomination of candidates of ruling party in the state in abnormally short span. Address to your lordship earlier. Mandamus directing State Election Commission to ensure filing of nomination of candidates who could not file their nominations due to obstruction of violence. My Lord, we have only, my Lord, vague references to violence, but my Lord, no particular instance of which candidate has been, my Lord, prevented in what manner. 
and how he has not let contemporaneously either approach the election commission or court. Then, my lord, issue a writ of order in the nature of declaration by declaring present election commissioner is incapable of conducting election independently, directing present election commissioner to be removed, directing team of National Human Rights Commission to inquire into incidents of violation, directing National Human Rights Commission to investigate an incidents of persecution of opposition candidates in the state. And well, this is what it goes on. Now, my lord, your lordships are entertaining petitions. I understand there are genuine concerns in some cases. Which your lordships have taken, my lord, much care to address, not once but twice over. But my lord, this is something that is not, my lord, to be countenanced. My lord, whenever there is a real or genuine grievance, my lord, of course, my lord, the commission will step in. And my lord, where the commission has been found wanting, your lordships have, my lord, taken the commission to task. The commission has realized, my lord, and has, my lord, woken up to its responsibilities. Well, but these kind of petitions, these allegations, and my lord, on general propositions, what are the duties of an election commissioner? My lord, what are the duties of a commissioner of free democracy? My lord, the right to free and fair elections, how right to free and fair elections should be ensured? I think, my lord, this honorable court has taken, my lord, much care to, my lord, ensure that the elections are free and fair, and my lord, that there is, my lord, to the extent possible, my lord, violence in control, and wherever there are instances of violence. Immediately, my lord, steps have been taken, arrests have been made, investigation made, and your Lordship has found, including members of my Lord, the ruling my Lord dispensation. Members of my Lord, Trinomal Congress, my Lord, workers my Lord, who have found my Lord to have engaged in acts of violence have been arrested. FIRs lodged against them, steps taken against them. But even then, my lord, if the court is of the opinion that my lord, there is a particular my lord, matter which needs to be investigated, your lordship will direct will immediately do that. But my lord, I don't find any such instance having been brought to your lordship's notice. My lord, this is my lord, really my lord, something which is in the nature of a fiction, disclosed documents, disclosed information, clear, ensure transparency. If it is in the court, if it is a part of the act and the rules, of course it will be done. But my lord, uh, there is no uh, such allegation. Some supplementary affidavit was filed today. Yes, my lord. I, I, my lord, see that affidavit, but I don't really know, my lord. Nothing has been placed from the affidavit. So, my lord, I, no, the affidavit no. is filed, but my lord. No, all nothing. the affidavits are identical. Uh, it says, let us say one example, page five. I am a victim of election violence that has taken place. Yes. I, while I, along other intending candidates were heading to the office. At Chopra, I was nominated uh, so and so. Other intending in candidates were prevented by the goons of the ruling party to file. Few candidates nominated by so and so were initially kidnapped on their way to the office. Ultimately, were accused. accused uh, the the cyclo style. I, I can't use the word cyclo style, but Mandal, it is cut, copy, paste. They are all identical. But my lord, be that as it may, my lord, I don't find any date of affirmation of my lord these no. individual affidavits. The only thing is that uh, our notary public here in the city civil court has signed it on 26th June. Now, my lord, the day, last date of filing was 15th, extendable till the 16th. <laughs> and my lord, on 26th June, some persons, my lord, come on us under the umbrella of safe democracy and will file these affidavits. And well, these affidavits are not a part of the main petition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. People came to Calcutta.
Yes. Sir. I do not want to engage your lordships in Malad going through the act and the rules, Malad. This your lordships have no, gone no, we, we have been hearing this and, again and again. And again. not only that, Malad, your lordships have analyzed, Malad, the sections, Malad, threadbare in your lordships, Malad, judgment. And Malad, that has now received the affirmation of the Honorable Supreme Court. But I do not have to read this. And Malad, apart from that one judgment, Malad, where the court formed an opinion, that's 1996 3 SCC 210, which Mr. the court formed an opinion that this must be the case. She has been the standing candidate for 15, 15 years. years. So therefore, one can presume that she has not been she allowed like to file on So the election is cancelled. Well, that, my lord, is on the facts. Each, each, my lord, judgment is delivered on the facts of the case. We draw a ratio of the judgments from, my lord, the propositions of law discussed. But, my lord, this is not, my lord, a general ratio that can be applied. And this is not the fact that can be applied to, my lord, these sort of cases. On these, my lord, PD allegations without any substantiation. And particularly when, Malad, 10 days after the election filing date is over, nomination filing date is over, persons come forward to affirm affidavits, I would request your lordships not to take any notice of this. But I have no further submission. I'm grateful to your lordships. Lord, may I, my lord? Sorry yes. to trouble your lordships. We'll lord. continue tomorrow. Yes. I will come one hour. No, this is tomorrow, 2 p.m. Huh? Which quantum matter? Actually, tomorrow, 2 p.m. 2 p.m. 2 p.m. Good morning. Sir, tomorrow the contempt petition is. Okay. No, no. Tomorrow, appellate side will be only at the second half. And uh, first matter which is fixed is contempt of petition uh, along with Justice Uday Kumar. You can come. Aram say you can come. Well, that is that is my petition. Well, that's very urgent also. The matter will be taken up after two years. Yes, yes. So you can come relax. This first we have to have assemble in that bench. We don't know how much time Mr. Saha uh, I, I don't think I'll take more than 20, 15, 20 minutes. Well, I don't know how much Mr. time Mr. Promit Roy will take. But my lord, the matter is really very simple, according to me. I don't think I'll take very much matter time. Before, before your lordship rises for the day, may I just mention a matter, my lord, an extremely urgent public interest litigation regarding... No the... mentioning, sir. My, my lord, my lord. 10.30, 10.45. My lord, it's an extremely urgent one, one matter, my lord. My lord, kind, kindly give two, me a... 2.30, 4.40. My lord, kindly say. It's lord, regarding the slaughtering of cows, my lord. I think you are all accustomed to mentioning only on Mondays. My, Be relaxed. It's a leave required, my lord. Leave required tomorrow, tomorrow morning. You. My lord, item my, 10, my lord. Patents to my lord. Ponchat Patrins election, my lord. Sir, my lord normally takes up. My lord, the group time, my lord. Time lord taken the, up tomorrow. Heard, Mr. Bikas Ranjan Bhattacharji, learned advocate, appearing for the petitioners in full. And he has concluded his submission. We have also heard Mr. Jesu Shah, learned uh, uh, senior advocate, appearing for the State Election Commission, who has concluded his arguments. For continuation of uh, the submissions of the other learned senior advocates, list the matter tomorrow. Um, higher on board. Higher on board. My idea is that will become influx, my lord. It will become influx. You take a decision to file the requisition. Now the incident, once the incident has happened, my lord, the yes, Bakris is on, on, on Thursday, my lord. Right. We came to know the day before yesterday. Then we have prepared the application. We have come you, before you the... file it in the department. So, allow kindly allow us to move it tomorrow, my lord. No, no. But item 10, my lord, no, deleted to Panchayat election, my lord. Because item 10, my lord. Kindly, kindly it was taken course. up yesterday, my lord, and my lord was directed, directed to the commission to obtain instruction, my lord. My lord normally takes up group. Tomorrow it will come. My lord, item 10, my lord. That is remaining, remaining list. Maradu, Maradu takes up Maradu, group 9 matters tomorrow, Malad. You push that and put this. Uh, we can't uh, assign all matters to September. We will only hear election. The lives uh, of this. Please, I, I please file it in the department. Uh, we will file it, but kindly allow us to move it tomorrow. Please file it in the department. Uh, we will, we will. But kindly allow us to move it tomorrow, my lord. Prayer rejected, sir. <coughs> my lord, an item number nine. Uh, this is also connected with the panchayat election. Kindly, kindly keep it tomorrow. Months, 
we will not take up any matter Kindly. all people let them suffer let them suffer this is very urgent very right? urgent very very urgent all these Relative people have the no elections. urgency Kindly they, they have all come here to just watch the proceeding enjoy the air conditioning that's what you think court is not for you alone sir. no nothing is at the heavens won't fall this might the other division bench has to be constituted we will go on then ag has to uh, argue mr bandopati has to argue then they will have to reply then rejoinder submission and sir rejoinder so everything will fall in line we can not do anything more than this okay. keep it kind please uh, understand our uh, difficulty also this is what we have been hearing pils from the morning hearing we have never refused to hear we have never refused to hear. so this is full the all council should have a satisfaction that they have been heard in full so this out of turn mentioning i want my matter at uh, 9 am tomorrow uh, 6 pm today that's all no cut shot business it's